The moment I feel my pain starting to fade, it's like I'm going back to myself on a good
All right, let's get this started. <laughs> oh, this is a shambles. <laughs> Hello, anyone, everyone. I've no idea who's here. I've no idea how to tell if anyone's here. Oh, I shouldn't have to do this on a day off. It should be illegal. I've had Blue give me like a crash course test. And uh, oh, I've taken in some of it. Definitely not all of it. Definitely not all of it. <laughs> Uh, how the hell did I even change? What was it that she did? She did she did a copy and a paste sort of thingy. Paste reference? I think that was it. There we go. Move that over to there. Who the hell even is here? I think I have an audience of nobody. Everybody realised that they regret choosing me to have a stream, and they're like, "This, this ain't gonna go well." <laughs> Got better things to do with my Saturday. <laughs> I did have some plans as to what I was gonna do today, but um, one one of the games doesn't work, and the other one I don't know if anybody would like. So I'm in a bit of a predicament because I I prefer old games to new games. But a lot of the old games that I played, I've played so much that I only see like the flaws in them, if that makes any sense, as to like what they could be, how they, how they could be better. Um, so when I look at them, I go, ah, oh, nobody will want to see that. That's that's just like that's my dumb game. That's that's my game that I play, and nobody else would play. <laughs> but it's probably not like that. People would probably be interested regardless. I thought I'd load up uh, my Steam library of my 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 nostalgia games, if you will, the games that I played growing up, and see if these see if anybody wants to see any of this, because some of them are really weird, but they are kind of what made me who I am. Um, and I've also got an old game that ran on MS DOS, which is probably older than most of Blue's audience, <laughs> which I think works, and I think I can get it to work, but it's um, it might be one of them weird mess about with screen capture completely ruin people's resolution and uh, make them cry. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I'd set this up as a kind of get to know spook stream, because I know a lot of people know Blue very well. They, they speak to her all the time. They they know what makes her tick to a degree, what makes her happy, what makes her lose her mind and rage, uh, and what scares the shit out of her. But I don't think people necessarily know a lot about me from Blue's audience. Apart from what they see of me on Tuesday, which is a kind of exaggerated personality co-host, I guess. I don't suppose people know what I'm like and what I do. Although I do try to get that across as much as I can on the game choices, at least, for, for Tuesdays. You know, the stuff that I, that I show Blue. But no, I don't show Blue every game that I've ever played, because I know for a fact that some of them... She'd just find them a bit kind of boring because they're just not her kind of game, you know. There's just some games that that you know people will, will look at and go, yeah, I can see that other people like that, but yeah, I'm bored. And when you're trying to do a stream, you need to have some enthusiasm for what you're doing to make either what's happening funny or to make something funny while it's happening. Because I play a lot of strategy games, a lot of strategy games, and especially in my in my earlier years, back in the days of like the PlayStation and the N64, I played a lot of strategy games back then. As you can see from here, like what have we got? Strategy, 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 strategy. That's a point and click, point and click. Uh, Dungeon Siege is a bit of an odd one because I think that's actually comparable to Diablo, even though I've not played Diablo. And then Evil Genius, strategy, Heroes of Might and Magic, strategy, Homeworld, strategy, strategy, strategy. A sh uh, first person shooter, strategy. First person shooter, point and click, which is a really weird one. Spud might be a funny one actually because it's kind of Christmas themed, but I don't know if people are ready to be cursed by Christmas already on the 2nd of November. <laughs> Mariah Carey in different form. And then strategy, strategy, and people know Thief. First person action adventure shooter, is it? Does it count as a shooter with a bow and arrow? Ye olde shooter? I don't know. Don't know how that would work. I did think more people would be here, to be fair, just to at least take the piss. I thought, like, Cor and Das would have turned up, but they don't seem to be here yet. 
I don't know whether to start something and just have it kind of running in the background and see where we go. Maybe Imperium Galactica. Maybe we go with this one. Hello, love. I think so. I, I'm understanding bits of it. I got to, I added text. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was making, I was making sure that you could see chat. I can see the the chat that's there. I can see Spectral Growlers there, and it's uh, that's yeah, two watching there, not including me. <laughs> no, I don't think it does. Okay, that, that, that's good. You. I don't think it does. Yeah. Uh, I, I might just yeah, start I'm just this too. Sure that's because uh, I'm I'm used to the streamer response of uh, read chat reading chat aloud. That's the thing that you just sort of learn as a streamer. Yeah, I guess so. It tells the person in the chat that you have seen their message. But obviously, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if people are here or not. This is why I'm good as a co-host, <laughs> not necessarily as the host. <laughs> Cheers, love. Yeah, I'll start with Imperium Galactica because at the very least, this has nice music. So when people do turn up. It's something nice to listen to. I played this when we took... Um, we had Das and Stacey in the car. I can't remember where we were going, but I think we were heading home from somewhere, so it was kind of late at night, and uh, just having this ambient space background music was sort of helping them go to sleep, as it were. Yeah, you can do the redeemables. I don't know if they work, because <laughs> Blue's avatar's not there, and you can't throw them at the picture, so I don't know how that one works. I think people would probably just be wasting their uh, their points. Blue should come up with a name for them points. Because there's a guy that I watch who does a lot of horror games and stuff. Um, Astro Spiff. And they're called Spiff Balls on his. I don't know. Blue should probably come up with a name for her points or something. Okay, now come on, Imperial Galactic. Get along. There we go. So, um, I suppose I should add this as a new scene. I guess. <laughs> We did plan to um, to do more coverage. Uh, can I? I don't think I can do this where I can mess about with the game scene whilst in it. I mean, I could just leave it on couch. I don't really care about my desktop. I'm not looking to do this professionally. The next time I do this, if I do this again, it will probably be like uh, a lot a lot better setup because Blue will actually Blue will be able to take notes from this and see like what was good, what looked kind of shit, what what gives her a bad impression for the channel and she'll be like right I need to make some changes on your computer because that's the only time when she'll hyper focus and be like this needs to now be organized like the rest of the time couldn't give a crap but now oh now it's important let's load up Imperium Galactica and see what happens oh my god the resolution you can count the pixels and that's probably really loud you'll have to tell me base one approaching target estimated time of arrival minus 10 minutes I've got the message. We are approaching. Commander, our hypervisor overloading. The generators will not send us. Activate the tractor beam. We will soon learn why they spy on our territory. It's weird that I don't remember this. We person. have visual contact with the ship, sir. What's happening? Leader one is down. We need help. The rebels are trying to get through. They're trying to land. We are under fire, sir. He's taking damage, sir. We're gonna die! Torpedoes away! I'm just gonna skip that for now. Let's drop that sound down. Yeah, I don't remember that cutscene. I know that when I was a kid, uh, for some reason, this game, it did not like the cutscenes when it, when it was playing on my dad's computer. It really had a shit fit, and it lagged like every second and a half, I'd say. And that wasn't just the video, but the music as well. It was awful. So I never really saw the cutscenes until I got my own PC some, like, I don't know, five, six years later, after I'd already played this game a shit ton. So, go figure. There you go. Let's, uh... Let's make a start. Let's go for a good old single-player game. So, let's just keep it plain and simple, plain and boring. Let's go with the Salarian Empire, humans. Called Salarian after the star system, Sol. Uh, the Salarian Empire has a turbulent history which can cause unrest even in these enlightened times. The Salarians are an inevitable race with strong research capabilities, although they are distinctly average in other areas. How to say that the, this is the boring race? 
Uh, it's been a long time since I've played this. I think I'm going to go with easy just because I don't remember ever being any good at this like long term. Back in the day, the graphics of this were amazing, and now it's like, can you count the pixels? <laughs> Formation. Use every advantage we have. Fidget spinner ship, yeah. <laughs> Joe, someone's on your tail. I'll be there in a second. I see him. Don't this worry, is the perfect way soon. to replicate how this game is not played because it looks nothing like this in the main game. This is just cutscene. The cutscene department got a budget and they went, we're going to fucking use it and we don't care. Because this was sick for early 2000, this was like, wow, look at the space stuff, the stuff happening. Fantastic use of cover there, ground team. This cutscene really kind of shows the amazing lack of knowledge on how ground combat would work. Who the fuck would just land and be like, right, we need you to run across this barren wasteland towards the enemy who have guns? It's completely stupid. Let's follow the river. And let's dangerously fly through the buildings where we risk driving, flying into them. Oh, there, this is the important Royal bit. Subjects, we are living in violent times. Within the Empire, a small minority of treasonous citizens attempt to ignite civil war. Outside of our borders, the forces of those who would oppress the human race are growing steadily. But we will not be denied our destiny. One day soon, the human race will enter a new phase in its evolution. A phase that will leave us with an unprecedented superiority over our foes. The four lost crystals, the tears of the gods, hold the key to this future. But they have been taken from us as a test of our righteousness. We must begin the search for their recovery immediately. And even though it may be our sons, or even our grandsons, who finally complete the task, none of us must shirk this responsibility. But it will not be easy, and the path ahead is dark and forbidding. That is why I have volunteered to be placed in suspended animation, so that in the future I may rise again and lead your descendants to their birthright. Then, godlike in our power and wisdom, mankind will bring the entire galaxy under our dominion. Who are your friends in the tubes? Anyway, I know there's more talking. Beg your pardon. Congratulations Ugh. on your appointment as the Solarian Emperor. The growth of the Empire should be your prime concern, and suitable planets should be located and colonized as soon as possible. You should also keep a watchful eye on the religious sect known as the Brotherhood of Tears. Membership of this cult has grown steadily over the past few years, and they are putting their considerable resources into locating the four lost crystals of knowledge. If the crystals are found, it is rumored that Caleron himself, the founder of the Brotherhood, will return to active life from suspended animation. If this is true, his return could seriously upset the stability of the Empire. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so the only important bit of that cutscene was that in this iteration of space sci-fi, um, humans are actually trying to achieve immortality uh, with apparently these four lost crystals of knowledge. So they've actually given the humans like a decent thing that they are aiming for in the wider world. Hey Voz, welcome back to see. Voz subscribes to me, not to Blue. 
just dropped by for the 23rd sub. I might lose most of it today due to work. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, welcome to Imperial Galactica 2. Um, I still own the, the disc of this. I actually have it on compact disc CD. Sat behind me on my little shelf. And as you can probably tell, one of the things that drew me to this game is the music. I mean, just listen to that. I play this all the time in the car. This is my like relaxation track to go to. Uh, this is one of the simplest strategy games that I played as a kid because unlike with a lot of modern strategy games where you have various resources that you've got to manage, so going to certain planets is going to be more key than others, the only resource in this game is money. You have a budget. That's it. And it's up here in the top left. That's how much money you've got. Everything just comes out of the budget. And my favourite story to tell about this game is my oldest friend Dan, who I love to bits, who is a complete moron. He has no patience for anything. So when we first loaded this game up, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And there's a tutorial that you can play at the start. But it's one of those real in-depth tutorials. It's not like, click the tutorial mission, we're going to take you through some basic stuff, probably around 10 minutes, and then put you in the game. It's split up into sections. And I think there's about like nine tutorials where it's like the first one deals with camera control. The second one deals with the planet screen. It's really broken down. So he loaded up the first tutorial. It told him to pan left, pan right, pan up, and pan down. He then got bored, exited the tutorial, loaded the game up like this, turned to me and said, Andy, how'd you play this game? And I fucking keeled over and pissed myself laughing. <laughs> so, how the hell do I know? I'm sat here with I'm watching the same screen as you. Don't, we've, we've just started playing the game. You think I know some secret knowledge that you don't? It's just, uh, it just crease me. But yeah, let's get into this game. We've got Soul 6, which should be Earth, but that's clearly Mars down there in the bottom left. And then Central 13, which I suppose would be... Uh, what's the name of the closest um, potentially habitable planet to us in a different solar system? Is it? It's not the Andromeda sister. I, my space... Not, my, my IRL space knowledge is actually not that great. Something like... Is it Alpha Centauri? No, it's Alpha Centauri, isn't it? I think this is meant to be like the equivalent of Alpha Centauri. Um, but you can go into uh was it going the space line? oh there you go right click to go into the colony and here's the colony screen look at this this small square is the planet and most of it is taken up with crap look at this this is crap can't build here that's that's fire look at that look at that awesome fire texture man i remember this game looking way better than it does <laughs> i used to love this back in the day so you can load up the stats on your, on your, uh, not on your empire, on this particular planet, and it'll tell you the kind of problems that they're having at the moment, how many workers you've got, how many workers you need, and the energy and stuff, and the morale thing, which is totally accurate to how modern day things work, because the higher morale, the better the planet is, right? That's how real life works, isn't it? The happier the people are, the better things work. That's that's what that's what they aim for, isn't it? All the higher ups, the government, they you know they think, oh, if we make the morale good, everything will work better. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what they do. Now what they do is they go into here and then they see this book called Tax and they go. And they try and get it as high as they can. So where do we start? We start with Conqueror, our first little fleet. And we're going to split it because it decides to put all your ships together. So all of your non-combat ships are in with your combat ships. So when you go exploring, it sends them all together. That's that's helpful, isn't it? You, you love that when that happens. So Orders you stay received. at home. Reporting, and we'll sir. go the other one. And we're going to make On you just do way. classic loop. That I used to do as a kid. Because most of these games that I played, I played when I went over to see my dad on the weekend. I'm one of those kids. I'm from that generation of millennials. You know, weekend dad. How many people can relate to that? <laughs> But there was always some cool game that was like it was like co kind of going to a shop that you live in and you get to play in, and there'd be like some weird new game. A new spy? That's great. I've got no one to spy on. Thanks for telling me that. I'm surprised I've not had a message yet. Normally I get a message. There's normally some sort of starting event. Sometimes it's like 
you know, some of your military is under the influence of the drugs and they've gone mad and started shooting up the, the, the civilians, so you've got to stop them. That's one of them. Or it's like we've discovered a pirate planet that's outside of radar range. Don't don't ask too many questions about how we know that, but they're there. Go and deal with them. Or there's like a trader that's dodgy and we need to, to apprehend him. There's, there's normally something. This time it's it's quiet. Get nothing. Don't don't get the the lovely little cutscene with the the man's face looking at you like something from Morrowind, and his his lip sync is not accurate for some reason. I don't know why they didn't bother with the lips. Even in that cutscene at the start, you saw they don't really care about lip sync. It's just this is a man talking. Blah, 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 blah. So just let him go on it, and we'll put the voiceover on afterwards. Ah, there we go. New message arrived. Let's see up in the top. You'll you'll love this. This is this is. Heat 2000s, this is amazing. From my personal advisor, there you go. A pirate stronghold has been located. Emperor, we've received a tip off from a merchant about a pirate base. He saw one of their ships and followed it from a distance to a stronghold they obviously use for supplies and repairs. We know the planet is defended by a sizable fleet, but we've been unable to ascertain the strength of their ground units. There you go. Possible pirate stronghold on planet Century 12, and it's good to know that my personal advisor is uh, Jason Statham. I think that means that we're in we're in good standings. Oh, there it is. So, I believe it's one of those of we can deal with it because we have four ships, eight fighters, and two tanks. Is what all those little things down the bottom mean. So let's, let's just go. let's just go and fight them. I, I I think this is a uh, suitable enough. I think if you put it on harder difficulties, you do actually need to get a few more tanks or ships to actually deal with stuff. No, oh, radar's disappearing because we're getting further away, so the signal is worse. I should maybe check out some of these planets because we're probably going to need them. 210% productivity and 100% fertility, I suppose it would be for people. Okay. And then that one's 75% and 150% respectively. Oh, we won. Yes, sir. We won. I, I thought strategic combat was on. We just won. All right. Thanks for all talking over everybody else at the same time. Couldn't have spaced out those bits of dialogue there. No, nope, just play them all at the same time. Thanks very much. Can I turn on the strategic combat? Because there definitely is some. Game... Uh, ground Battle Simulate. I mean, is this set to on? Or do I turn it off because it means simulators and it runs it automatically? I'll try turning it off, see what that does. Uh, let's colonize that planet because 210% productivity is really good. And I'm actually going to start producing some stuff, so... Let's get a couple more tanks because they probably will be necessary. This isn't one of those space games where you can just send spaceships to orbit or bombard something into the Stone Age and it will just do it indefinitely. You actually have to do ground combat, which I do kind of prefer. There's a lot of space games where ground combat is like you just need a tank to go down, put a flag down, and be like, you see all this all this genocide and all this flattened building all these flattened buildings and ruins? Yeah, we now own this. And that's that's ground combat in most games, it's a bit shit. Uh, and let's just put some infinite fighters on because I know fighters is just one yes. of those things that the the enemy spams at you quite a lot. You just nice get inundated sir. with fighters just blowing all your ships up. Think like the X-Wings from um, Star Wars. I might as well start researching some stuff. Let's get the better radar so we can see a little bit further. Let's make our circles bigger. Bigger circles are better. Yeah, I got an idea of a couple of games that I want to go through, just to show off some of the old stuff that I used to play. This was this was on the list, just for the music alone. Just because I love the music in this game, and I will keep saying it. But uh, I was also thinking about putting on Stronghold. I know Stronghold was a, a very popular one. It's a, a more well-known strategy game from way back in the day. Some people really loved Stronghold. Uh, and the sequels, they weren't terrible, but they, they definitely lacked something that the first one gave. Yeah, it's like Age of Empires. Age of Empires 2 was amazing, and they've made 3 and 4 a mythology, and they're like, yeah, you know, they're, they're good, but you just can't beat number 2. Number 2 just had something that the others didn't. Oh, there we go, we've got a new planet. So if I remember correctly, while this is starting up, setting its tax to none raises the morale mass magnificently and makes everybody want to have the babies, which I do need. 
near the babies. There we go. Bigger balls, bigger circles, bigger red. What's this planet like? Shit. What's this one like? That one's even worse. Terraform. Jesus, terraform that planet. That is horrendous. That should not exist. Let's have a look on here. Let's let's try and deal with some people's problems. You're saying there's high taxes. There's not high taxes. They're moderate taxes. That's high taxes. That's moderate taxes. Learn to read, people. Although there is no school, so I suppose I can I can forgive that. Uh, there is 4,500 people, and I happen to know that that seems to be the magic number for building more spaceship factories. There you go. You got the all, you got all the symbols here. It's going to cost 10, 10 grands, ten thousand dollars. Take 300 energy, which I got 400 of down there in the bottom left, and takes 4,000 people. So yeah, get another one of them because that it means that you can spend more money more quickly to build something faster. That's like how this game works. Again, no resources, just money. What do you like? Century five. Oh, you're pretty good. You're a pretty good planet. I should get you at some point. I do know that as I play through this game, as soon as I meet like the first enemies, you get that kind of, hello, we're a new race. It's nice to meet you. You must die. It escalates that quickly. You're like, you don't want to talk about like trade or non-aggression packs or any of the back. No, you just, just kill. All right, just kill me then. Just, just, just take me out. I should be checking chat. Oh my god, it's Denise. Who let her in here? Mind you, I can't really shun too many of Blue's audience, because otherwise there'd be nobody left. <laughs> I'm waiting for PK to get here so I can rip him apart. I need someone to take the piss out of. Yes, oh, sir. First set of five fighters. Look at them polygons. To be fair, the humans seem to just want to conquer and show how great they are, so can you blame the other... I mean, yeah, that's that's fair. If there is other life out there, they are really going to hate us. It's like, really going to hate us. <laughs> She's going to be like, why are you just the way you are? Like, can't help it. Why can't I deploy a satellite around this one? Look at this lovely terrain. Look at that. I'm going to conquer you. Hmm, I wonder what this obviously space hub shaped square is for here in the centre, hmm? I wonder what that's for. Somebody thought about that. Why can't I put a satellite around here? I have the money. You probably won't get PK in here yet. It's probably 6am there. Yeah, but Americans don't sleep. Core is never offline. Narrowing seems to be like, oh, I'll just have an hour and a half kip and then run for 48 hours and I'll be fine. So, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if PK was the same. What's happening on Sol? Can I, um... I can rename this, can't I? Yeah! Um, what do we call this one? It's 6.37am in Colorado. Alright, that's a weird name for it, but we'll go with it. It's 6.37am in... in. Oh, that's all I can fit. There you go. It's 6.37am. That'll be it. What do these people need? They don't need anything, they just want lower taxes. I'm not lowering the taxes. I need them. You can be my research planet then. Research me some stuff. Let's go for... Let's go for a spaceship factory. No, I don't want the... Oh, piss. Oh, whatever. I meant to put in a research facility. It's fine, it's fine. And this is one of the games that I actually used the F1 and F2 keys for because they were all the shortcuts to all the screens. <laughs> I've never done that. Oh, there he is. Fucking hell, to speak of the devil, and he shall appear. Look at this non-Blue Sky Wolf game, huh? Awaiting orders, sir. Blackwing. Sort of an ominous name for a trader. I feel like something should have, like, incorporated on the end, you know? INC. Is that just me? Maybe. Whoa! That's the new planet. Who the hell built all this? This was just a square a minute ago, wasn't it? Oh no, that's the pirate one. Oh, what did we find on the pirate one? We found a bar. 
And that was that's always that was always something weird about this game is you got all these things researched like a food factory and a fusion plant and housing, all these buildings you can build, but you never had a bar research. Like, look at the year. The year is two thousand three hundred and twenty eight and we didn't know what a bar was. I don't believe I, I, like, what happened in society. Yeah, PK, you're already dead. I killed you at the start of the game. You died already. GG. Oh, I can check out this planet. 200%! Another good planet. I actually want that one. That's actually really good. Can I build stuff here yet? No, I can't. Have you not finished that spaceship factory? Where is it? No, it's nearly complete. Um, Alright. I'm going to set that you build a colonization ship. And as soon as that's ready, production will begin immediately. Oh, I'm getting hungry already. Why can't I build a satellite around this? I don't understand. There's stuff about this game that I still don't know. We need to get him a moving thing. Yeah. Can't throw balls at me. You can't you can't can't have duck me. You can't do anything. I'm just a here. I'm just a picture. I could get a proper VTuber for him. Everyone's been saying they really want to get me like furry stuff. I don't understand why. What is the obsession with furrifying me? I want a second colonization ship now. Because I think there's a two planets. Look at that, there's an actual Earth there. Not our main planet. Oh, that makes sense. Some what cataclysmic event happened? We're on Mars. We went to Mars. Earth fuck get rid of that. It's not even there. Look, if I zoom in on the map, it's not there. There's the sun. There's Mars. All the other gas giants are fucked off, and everything that was in the center is dead. Explains it. Your orders. Go and join up with the Conqueror. Position, sir. Told. Oh, there we go. Talian fleet. We've, we've, we discovered the Talians. What's the button for the, the, the diplomacy screen? Is it this one? Look at that. First time. I still remember. Spook is first forced into a foe model. This feels like some five... Ah! Oh, that was it! I was going to talk to you guys about something. I had a story and there's enough of you here now. I went down a rabbit hole this morning. You know the Wikipedia rabbit holes? I had one of those moments. It was brilliant. Also, I don't know what these things are supposed to look like. Like To me, that just looks like a kind of tongue. Sort of lapping up over the mouth. It's um, it's kind of gross. Anyway, I, I need to negotiate with these people because they will like just try and attack me at some point. I'm afraid your proposal for a non-aggression fact was vetoed by our Senate. Cool, so they're gonna they're just gonna fight me. Alright, well just go fuck yourselves then you arseholes. Do build some destroyers and just put them on auto because I'm going to need them soon. Um, it's so weird not to be able to scroll in and out with the mouse map. But anyway, my um my story. So my mum's been has given me her laptop and she's given me this huge task of trying to find all her old music for her YouTube account because that's just how she listens to music because she's a boomer. Uh, no, she's Gen X, but she's like super technophobic, like beyond anything that you can possibly imagine. Using Google is like advanced computer stuff to her. Every time she asks something on Google, it's with somebody with her and she asks it, literally types it out like a question with please at the end she's proper technophobe does not do computers so i'm trying to find out some some of her old music so she can listen to it and one of the tracks that she wanted to listen to is an old tv theme from when she was a kid from 1968 i don't know if anybody here would even remotely remember it maybe denise might from like her parents i don't know but it was um the show was called the banana splits right Old uh, character people dressed up in costumes, children's TV show. So you get kids that would come onto the show, and they'd you know do like slapstick t comedy, running around, just just you know kids show stuff, Saturday morning TV show stuff, the kind of thing kids would look forward to seeing because they're going to do stupid things, play some songs. The banana split. You remember the banana splits? I thought it was a, a British TV show, so I thought no one would remember that. Well, she wanted the theme tune for that. So I'm looking online and I'm trying to find it on YouTube and I'm loading up like pictures of it on Google just being like, yeah, 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 the banana splits. In fact, I need to show the picture. I need to show the pic. Th this works better with the context. Let's just pause that for a second. Right. Can I? Where is? Don't need that screen. I need this new window. Right, let me let me find it up here. Um, da -da 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 -da. This is what Blue does on stream, isn't it? She's just like, let's, let's just tangent. Let's just tangent. Tangenting's fun. There we go. The banana splits. Images. So I need to make sure that I show... Uh, 
what it was that I was looking at specifically at the time which drew my eye to it as like kind of huh that's weird this is the bit right can I yeah I can bring this down here right but there you go you got the banana splits so I was looking through as to like the album covers because they they did make albums for, for, the, for the, the songs that they did on the show you know there they are the banana splits I don't know the names of them don't don't ask me uh, do you know where I'm heading with this? I had no idea about this, and it it kind of freaked me out because I'm looking through and I'm like, yeah, there we go, blah, blah splits, blah, blah, splits, it's all the same kind of cover, the best stuff, blah blah blah. And then I scrolled down to about here, and I noticed something, and I don't know if you all have already noticed it from the screen, but this picture really drew my eye to it, and I was like, huh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Why does the dog have like? A robotic face underneath and naturally you'll all do the same thing as me and you'll go that's a bit five nights at freddy's isn't it and i was like that's a bit of a jump that's a bit of bit of you can't jump to that kind of conclusion right off the bat because this came out in 1968 it was popular among kids in the 70s five nights at freddy's is from the 2010s like 2014 or something i think it was because i'd already been dating blue for a bit we used to watch Slender and stuff, so Five Nights at Freddy's came after them. I was like, that's really weird. Why is that like that? Because they're not animatronics. They were they were actual actors. You know, it was like the Power Rangers. They were they were people dressed up in suits. So I was like, that's that's really weird. I don't understand why that is the way it is. And then I scrolled down even further and I saw this, the Banana Splits movie. And I was like, what the fuck am I looking at? That's not what the Banana Splits is. It was an innocent kids TV show. What's what's age rating 18? When did this come out? So I jumped down the rabbit hole going through Wikipedia. It came out in 2019 and it's rumored the reason that it exists is because the original people that had the license to make the Five Nights at Freddy's movie was Warner Brothers. And because it was taken away from them and it went in a different direction, they used the budget and the, the whatever sort of stuff they'd got about it. And they were like, we'll just stick the banana splits as the characters instead. <laughs> I was like, what? How, do I, how would I even begin to tell my mom about this? The, they took your childhood TV show from the 70s. They took some weird horror mechanic horror horror video game from a guy who was about to give up on the on making games for the internet and they just merged them together there's a connection that me and my mum share in what kind of stuff we watch from those from from stuff that is 50 years apart 1968 to like 2014 a 50 year gap I was just sat here this morning just like recoiling like I haven't got a fucking clue where to even start with this and it's not like this is it's it's age rating 18 this is like gory stuff there's like corpses all over the place in the film it is it's fucked up it's really weird <laughs> I was reading about it on IMDB it, it was only like you know got like a 5 out of 10 because it was kind of naff but I was just like just just following through that series of like do 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 yep we're just looking at album covers huh that's kind of weird. Why is that there? Why is that? Hold on a second. A movie? What? Just, man, it was. I, I kind of don't want to show her because I, it, I feel like it's either gonna upset her because it's like her old. Like imagine like some of the stuff that you used to watch as, as a kid, and then like imagine that they're like overly sexualized it or something or some something weird like something that you would never expect they took something innocent and they made it horrific like if they took something innocent from like our youth that's already been done we, we've already seen that kind of stuff with like thomas the tank engine or whatever it's like yeah we'll just put a horror theme on it and we're kind of numb to that but imagine if they did something that's weird to us when we turn like 50 and 60 like my mum turns 60 next year this is something she watched when she was a preteen. you know what i mean it's just it's weird <laughs> just don't know what to say about it but yeah I told Blue I was really excited about it yeah like Winnie the Pooh they do they, they've done weird stuff with the Winnie the Pooh and we're kind of like yeah numb to it like yeah who gives a shit yes sir but yeah I, I went into Blue this morning when I was like hey Blue can you wake up and come and help me with this fucking stream stuff and she's like yeah I'll be there in like five minutes and it was there like an hour and a half later like blue finished setting up for this stream about 10 minutes before i started <laughs> oh man so funny i don't know whether to even bother talking about the game because this is ne this isn't necessarily the kind of stuff you're interested in you're here to see me aren't you and just listen to me rant on about stuff 
I could just stop this now and just go back to looking at Pokemon Series 4 and being like, which ones of these are good and which ones are shit? And you guys would be like, yeah, I'll watch that. That's, that's cool. That's fun. <laughs> Soul 8. That's not how that works. There is only one soul, but, you know, we'll go with all these. Yep, soul, 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 soul. Again, chatting with extra tips. Oh, yeah, should I probably... Should I change it, the thing to say my name Imperium Galactica? Should I do that, or should I just keep it as just chatting? Because I am just chatting. Who cares? You guys don't care about the game. I barely care about it at this point. I'm just, I'm just enjoying... Yes, enjoying talking. Because that is the point. That is the more the point of this stream. In fact, the more... the the, the Hang on, where do I... Can I go to that? There we go. There we go. Let's, let's, let's do that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't go. To, I don't switch to like an I'm messing about with something and then I'll switch it over. I don't use the same program that Blue does. So any changes I make, they're live. They're they're on the fly. <laughs> oh, Blue changed it for me earlier. Okay, there you go. Look, ask me anything. This is the Ask Spook Anything stream, and I'll answer it. Yeah, because people, because some people like, like like our close friends will know me because they've known me for like. 12 years or so, but people who watch Blue for Blue stuff, they don't really know who I am other than I'm Blue's partner. That's about it. That's not really much of a personality if it's like, well, who are you? And it's like, well, my name doesn't even appear in my personality, but someone else's does. I'm Blue's boyfriend. Like, mm, yeah. Awaiting orders, sir. Your orders. Is this a... Oh, colonization ship is time. Time to colonize. Yes, yeah. No, go. Yes, go sir. Acknowledged. I've forgotten how this works. Go there. What are the first 100 digits of pi? The first 100 digits of pi are I don't care and neither should you because you're a social experiments major or whatever it is. Yes, sir. I said you can ask me anything. I didn't say I'd necessarily answer it truthfully or accurately. I'll just answer it. I know one of the digits of pi is crust. This is what I shouted at Max when I told him to name another girl, and he went ex's girlfriend like that. <laughs> that doesn't count. There you go, see? It's like when you used to ask your parents, well, for British people, like ask your parents about like the old imperial currency, and they'd, they'd be like, oh yes, we used to go down, and it used to be three shillings for a whatever, and you go, well, how much is a shilling? And they go, oh, well, it's half a farthing, and you go, okay, well... How much is a whole farthing then? They go, well, a whole farthing is two crowns. And you're like, STOP TALKING IN RIDDLES! I NEED A BASE UNIT TO MEASURE FROM! I got my nan to write out all of those measurements at one point. I was like, what is the smallest unit of imperial currency? And I need to know what the value of everything is in that unit. And the smallest currency was a half penny. And there was like a half penny, then there was a full penny, then there was threepence, which was three pennies. And I, I had it all written down at some point. I've no idea where that list has gone, but I definitely had it. Have you gotten a chance to play the Castlevania DLC in Vampire Survivors? I have bought it, but I have not played it. I could put Castle, I could put the um, Vampire Survivors on, because I've played that game so much. But A, there's the potential of an epilepsy warning, which I don't know if Blue would appreciate because I play, I, I have that game played so well that I can just leave it on auto. I don't really have to look at it after the first like five minutes. It's like yeah, the, my character will just level up now and just become boss. It's just what they do. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Why can I not colonize this planet? Yes, sir. I should be able to colonize this planet. Yes, this is sir. a colonization ship. Yeah, that is definitely a colonizer. All one word, apparently. Type colonization ship, like a relationship. Why? 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 Oh, now I can. Now I can colonize it. All right, change your mind. Good for you. Wait, is that because it was too far up the top of the screen? I'll have to test that. I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, I loved the the trailer for the Castlevania DLC. I love the music. I forget I forget how much I love the Castlevania music until I hear like Bloody Tears or something or um, After Confession and all the memories come back and I'm like, oh my god, yes, I just want to play some Castlevania now. There's a Castlevania game that I really want to play with the squad that came out on the Xbox 360's Live Arcade, but it's not available now. This game is reminding me we need to continue that Stellaris game. Yeah, this this was probably a... a I, I'd say it was probably an influence for Stellaris, but I don't know that. Uh, I love Stellaris. I love this game, mainly for the music. I hope it's I hope it's peaceful in the background. If you're there and you're just lurking, 
I hope you're listening to the music and you're like, yeah, this is nice. Because this is what I was like as a kid. We used to play this game, like, this time of year, when it gets dark really early. So it'd be like 7 o'clock at night, and I'd be at my dad's, and there'd just be like the, the faint smell of, like, cigarette smoke in the air. Sort of like an old bar. And there'd be me and Dan, and we'd both be huddled around one of those old big monitors on his on his huge desk that he had that for all his when he messed about with his computer and stuff. And there'd just be the sound of the computer tower tick, ticking over and by the side, and it would just just be through the speakers, no headphones, just be through the speakers, and we'd just have it just just loud enough that we could still hear whatever Dad was watching on the, on his TV, like the the golf or something or whatever. And we'd just be like enthralled, like this was like the most important thing in the world. We'd be, li- be like slightly leaning into the TV, uh, to the monitor, and just you know, every time something new happened that we hadn't seen before, because we play the same games over and over again, get all dead excited. It was, oh, it was brilliant. I love those memories. Real, real innocent times, real good times. I really wish I could get my favourite game to work, because it's technically now abandoned. Where the company that that made the game no longer exists they went down oh, sometime in like 2015 or 16 or something long long time ago they announced a sequel to one of their older games uh, and I was looking forward to that but it never made it to production just one of those sort of things of the internet unfortunately yes. they just didn't have the the money for it or the backing or anything so it never came to yes, fruition sir. but the the second game they made is my favorite and I do want to eventually get that working but I've got to try and acquire it I have the I have the CD. In fact, I went onto eBay and I bought a, the box of it because I never had the manual because the manual's still at my dad's and I, I wanted to look through the manual again. It was just like it was like a kind of personal relic, like an artifact of the past. I used to sit and just flick through and just look at the stats of all the creatures and it had its own font or its typeface. I suppose is the correct way of putting it. And it was just so so mysterious and so involved with itself. And I loved it. So I have the CD. I just can't get it to work because, you know, on Windows 10 and this thing came out for like Windows 95 or something. It was compatible with computers that could run MS-DOS, you know. When I dig up a nostalgic memory of a childhood computer game, I think of Roller Coaster Tycoon. I did play Roller Coaster Tycoon, but the game that I played, the Tycoon game that I played the most at my dad's did run on MS-DOS and it was Transport Tycoon. Oh man, what a game. I could probably put that on as well at some point. I love Transport Tycoon. That's fantastic. I love the art style. It always reminded I don't know why it always reminded me of Lego. Even though it's not it doesn't it's not like blocky like Lego, but it always just gave me that, that feeling, that sensation that I was playing about with stuff that f- could fit together perfectly like Lego could. Man. The amount of times we just restarted a new game on that and it was like, oh, we've, we've transported like iron to the steel factory and then you get that realisation of like, oh, it, it turns steel into goods and we can take the goods somewhere and that makes us even more... It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> galaxy brain moment! That, you can still play Transport Tycoon. There's like a community of people that have made open TTD, an open um, code version of Transport Tycoon Deluxe. That's why it's called Open TTD. And it does multiplayer, yeah. Me and Stanji have played it on numerous occasions. You should come play with us, PK. It sounds like you would like a lot of the games that me and Stanji do play. Yes, sir. So hang on, if I, if I scroll down, can I not... Oh, that's what it is. If you scroll too far off screen, you can't colonize... But the, the button was there, but it, the visuals weren't... Oh, as someone who's now trying to learn games design, this is the kind of stuff that would irk me as a game developer. I'd be like, I've got to fix that. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't look like that. <laughs> There's another old space. I like strategy games, just not great. Yeah, same for us. Um, what's another game? Master of Orion 2. Me and Stan, you've played Master of Orion 2 a shit ton. Oh man, that get we have had some laughs on that game. For a game that's from 1995, it's awesome. It's fucking awesome. And uh, here is a Might and Magic 3. Another fantastic strategy game that me and Stan, you played. I think. I mean, that's those kind of games are the, are the reason that me and Stan, are good friends today. We went and met up at, um, at GemuCon way back in the day. I'm pretty sure that was the first one that we went to. Yeah, that was. When I saw Stanji when he was ill, because um, he'd had like something like, I don't know, 16 pints or something. And uh, then he started to feel ill for unrelated reasons, of course. Still, He still claims to this day that it wasn't because he'd had a lot to drink, but whatever. 
Um, but yeah, we started talking. It's like, oh, we're both in the same area. We're both from Birmingham. Oh, that's amazing. It's like, what kind of games do you play? And I was like, oh, man. I don't want to talk to Blue's friends about the kind of games that I play because I'm an old stick in the mud and it's like I don't... The most relevant game that we all play together was Minecraft at the time because it was 2012. It's like I don't want to tell you about the kind of games I play and I was like, oh, you know, I play old strategy games. He's like, oh, sick, I play old strategy games. I was like, oh, okay, um... God, what old strategy games do I play? I play like Master of Orion 2 and he was like, what? Battle of uh, Antares and I was like yes how did you know that he's like I played the shit out of that back in Poland before I even understood English and it was like there you go connection made instant friends just just that just that that's all we needed and then it was like what else you play here is a Mighty Magic 3 oh my god I played that too and yeah that's how friendships form you just play some old stupid game from back yes, in the day sir. I don't know whether I should show you guys Ascendancy because that's a proper old school strategy game. That's a real old school 4X game. And I loved it, but it's crap. <laughs> like, mechanical, mechanic wise, it's got some great mechanics, but then it's also got some really shit mechanics. But I just, I just love that game. It is the game that when Liz was saying to me, oh, you should learn um, games design. You should learn how to like, learn a coding language and you should try and make games because I think you'd be really good at it and I was like ah, I don't know and then I started messing about with stuff and it's like oh, I could I could probably do this if I really put some effort into it I could probably do this and I thought man if I made a game what game would I make and I was like I want to make Ascendancy I want to remake Ascendancy but I want to make it better I want to make it good you know I want to iron out all the flaws that it had and it's like that that would just sort of start me off and I've, I've made a prototype I mean, I've made a, st a start on a prototype, I should say, you know, like I've got Galaxy Generation. I can make this. See, so it's like a black screen with white dots on it, and I can choose how many dots spawn. Like, that's that's impressive. Oh, hang on. I've got a message here. Oh, not from my personal advisor, just an advisor. R. Mayor Sheldon. Before that name meant nerd with a laugh track that everybody kind of love hates. Yeah. I've just received the resume of a rogue offering his services to us. Have a look at the data and decide if you want to employ him or not. We need to give him an answer quickly. I don't give an answer quickly, you can fuck off. One heavy destroyer, five grand a year. I think we've got that in the budget, sure, why not? Alright, could use him. Sign a permanent contract. You are with us until you die. Yes. There you go, I'm going to give you command of this fleet as well. Hey, we should be doing research, I haven't done any research. I've not been paying attention to the game at all. I've just left it on slow speed and I'm just talking shit. He didn't say Bazinga. Yeah, he didn't say Bazinga. Of course. Awaiting orders, sir. On my way. So yeah, what kind of stuff do you want to see me play? What do you want to see happening in the background while I talk crap? What kind of questions do you want to ask me? There's a fun question. Not not ask me the question, but what kind of questions do you want to ask me if you could ask questions? There you go. Let's let's middleman this. Hmm. I have to keep up with the water now. I can feel the pressure of being a streamer. Everyone's hanging on my every word. All nine people that are here. Seven of which are probably lurking. Blue's definitely lurking. She's like, if, if, if this starts going badly, I've got to run like 15 feet and pull the plug. Just whip that ethernet cable out. Just wham. <laughs> Cut it dead. <laughs> What's going on on the planets? What's happening on here? 2,200 people. That's not enough. Does page up and page down still work? Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Fuck off, bird! What the fuck? I don't need that when I come to your planet. Jesus. Screaming down my neck. Uh, let's get some more research. We need research. We desperately need more research. Let's get a bit of tank research, and I suppose we'll set up some building research. Shut up, bird! Ruining my fucking Saturday. 11,000 people! Oh, this is the new place, isn't it? Yeah, this is one of the new places. So, you're um, you're getting taxed now. Sorry, but... It's gotta be taxed now. It's just gotta happen. What are we gonna do with these 11,000 people? We're gonna need more ships. Because I can't make money yet. Can I make... What does the trade port do? Uh, I need to go to the research screen. Check out what this does. Look at this! A whole screen for research! Honestly, the best streamers are the ones with the streamers chatting and also genuinely enjoying the game. I do enjoy this game. This this is... I They made another game. And I don't know when it came out, but I bought it and it was terrible. But it was the same people that made Imperium Galactica. And that's why I was like, oh man, I've got to buy this game. I can't believe they made another one. But it just wasn't good. 
I can't remember enough about it, but I remember within the first like 30 minutes of playing, I was like, man, this just does not feel like a good game. You know? 11k people party all year. <laughs> where the hell's all this? There you go. Trade port, where the fuck? Uh, attracts traders to visit the planet more often and gives access to the trade screen. Okay, what does a bank do? Uh, fuck points of colonial research. Every trader who arrives has to pay a docking fee of five grand. That's the trade center. What does the bank do? For each trader paying the docking fee, it increases the revenue by 50%. So basically, I want a trade center and a bank on every planet. All right, let's get to that. Let's do that. Let's let's rip people off. Trade center requires 5,000 people. You taking the piss? I can't afford that. I ain't even gonna be able to afford that here because I've just filled it with people. This one can, right? Trade center and a bank requires 3,000 people. Why? It just does. Let's get a trade port. There you go. That's the trade planet now. This is a new planet. They can deal with whatever they're doing. Don't care about you because you're too new. I'm not in not in the mood to micromanage today. We're just we're macroing this ship. Let's get a trade center here as well. Let's back out. Uh. Going to need some terraformers and colonization ships. Let's just build a couple of them while that. Yes. You still building ship? Yeah, you are. Who else has got access to build stuff? Nobody? Why not build on any other planets? This has got 200% production. Oh, I've just filled it with crap. Ah! Oh, whatever. It's fine. It's fine, yes, it's not an issue, it's not an issue. Blue, if you're there, my belly calls for lasagna. I'm tired now. Too much talking. Don't know how Blue does this all day. It says the stream has been live for an hour and three minutes. How long should I do per game? Like, two hours? Although Blue says that we're only here till four, so maybe I should... Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm in charge of the stream. I'm in charge of the stream. I'm doing what I want to do. Let's go to the options. Let's save this game. I'm going to show you Ascendancy, even though it's bad. Because I like it. Um... Where? There you go. That time... Spook... Streamed. There you go. I'm going to show you Ascendancy, because I can. Because when else am I going to get the chance to? I was saying to Blue, next charity stream there needs to be a goal where we get a Spook and Blue cooking stream. No, <clears throat> I would hate that. I hate cooking. Like, do I need to talk about how much I... I know Blue's not making me lasagna because she's just gone for a piss. Fuck's sake. Um, right. How the fuck do I do this? This is my desktop. As you can see, there is no porn on it. It's great. I am an innocent, good, good world man. It's good, that is. And it's neat and organized, with the exception, exception of this, because Blue just put it there. Uh, right, we don't need Steam. Where is Ascendancy? Computer games. Uh, still in unconfirmed. How's this going to look? I need to check on the... I have a very tiny, teeny, tiny window that tells me what I'm currently looking at. Is that showing up? I think so. Uh, no, it's not. I'm going to need to capture that source separately. Um, add source. Window capture. Ascendancy. What window is it? It is the... Is it that one? There we go. Can I change the... Nope. 
Ah, uh, fuck it. That'll do. I'm not a professional streamer, I don't give a shit. So if I load that up like that, is that gonna... Uh, is that gonna make it big? Is it? No, because it's the wrong fucking source. Can I edit it? Or should I just delete it? You guys enjoying this? This is the technical stuff that I don't know how to do, and I don't care. I leave. I, you know, when I when Blue's doing something on stream, and I like kind of tech the person, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're doing. I genuinely don't. I don't follow along with what she does because this is not my job. So I don't. I do not keep in touch with it. Is it that? No, it's not that. Is it that? It's that. Right. There we go. We got it. We got there in the end. So if I make that bigger, it's about there. That'll do. Minimize that, minimize that. Um, alt and enter to go back to full screen. Oh, well, that makes it black in the background. I guess that's fine. Is that good? Let's have a look. Let's just, let's just hit buttons and let's see. Uh, we see DOS. Yep. This is, again, another abandonware. But I do own it. That is not quite right because it is slightly too big. Oh, my God. God, how big is this fucking thing? What the fuck? That'll do. That's about the right size. Uh, chuck that down there. Those audio levels suck. Can you hear that, guys? Can you hear the music from Ascendancy? Is that alright? That lizard head. Hey! These, these are the dudes that are sick. I used to play them all the time. I love these dudes. Let's, let's, uh, I'm going to make it bigger for myself. There we go, so I can see better. Got to lower the sensitivity on my mouse because it's actually a teeny tiny screen that I'm playing now that I'm forcing to be full resolution. This is Ascendancy. This is from the days of, like, pff, I want to say... Uh, I mean, Master of Orion 2, that actually did load up on DOS. This is an old, old DOS game. And it's another space strategy game. I played a lot of them. They really influenced me as a kid. Uh, I played this when I was a young teenager, though, because I didn't realise that this game existed. I played, not the sequel, but the second game that the company that makes this, the Logic Factory, I played that game. Fuck off, Krauser. Dickhead. Ruin him. It's my f I love this game. This is my second favourite game. But the company that makes this, the Logic Factory... Uh, I played their second game, and I, that is my favourite game. I love that one so much. But then I found this one, and I was like, how did I not know about this? This is amazing. All right, it's going to go. We're going to new game. Look at this. Look at it. It's just amazing. It just looks sick. That is the galaxy that I'm about to generate. And I could change the star density on Emily's. Oh, sorry. I, just, I love this game. Uh, I'm going to set it to just a... Uh... Let's go for a sparse one. I'm probably not going to play this to the end. Because these are long games. The strategy games, they're meant to be something that you play over like a few days that you come back to. Because that's just how they are. Uh, colour, I'm obviously going to be blue, representing the channel. Let's go with a lot of species so we meet people. And then, look at these. Look, these are the species down the side. These are the freaks. Right? Look at them all. They're all great. And there's loads of them. There's 21. There's 21 races in a game this old. They didn't just say like, yeah, we'll make three be done with it. Imperium Galactica that I just played which came out after the year 2000 they were like you get three playable races and that's your lot. This is a game from before graphics were even like a good thing. <laughs> this was just a few squares on a screen that we're going to change the colour of and we're going to say yeah that represents something. And look they're like yeah we're going we're gonna to make 21 races and they're all going to be different they're going to do different things. They're going to interact differently it's great. Got the minions which is basically like the world, uh, War of the Worlds creatures. The Snovum Domers, which are big mammoths that have really tough uh, ships, hard to break. The Orpha, which have like 16 different genders. How oddly appropriate for today's age. Great, isn't it? Uh, the Kambuchka, that look like membrane sandwiches. Mm. Be the one with the big bedoinka doinks. Yeah, everyone loves the Govarom. Look at them. This is what Busted was singing about. This is the future. How many of you get that reference? Eh? How many of you get that one? I did like the Govron, but I feel like I should go with my favourites. Look at them. The Arbrils. Just, I just lo The thing that I loved about this space game was there are no humans. 
you have to be something weird. So you have to pick something that looks weird that appeals to you. When they put humans in space games, I'm always like, oh, I'll go with them to begin with because they're going to be like the default starter race. You know, they're the ones that's like, they don't have anything special. They're a little bit good in maybe like science or industry or they got a little something going for them, but they'll teach you the game. It's like, no, no, you got to pick something weird. You got to pick like the giant bug things, you know, or the the specs the jellyfish of light. I always went with these guys. I don't know how you've properly pronounced them because it's that old. They didn't care. I always called them the Chamachis, but I don't know whether it's like the Kamaki Kamakis or the Chamakis or the Kamachis. I don't know. But they're six-legged reptiles and they're all about technology and they have one of the best like race uh, soundtracks when you start the game. Listen to this. Haunting. It's so good. I loved it. I remember hearing that when I was, uh, I heard it through headphones when I was a kid and it's just like, it just, the music just flowed through me. I love it. I, I base a lot of my game taste on music and it comes from my favorite game that I played. The music in that game is just unbelievable. Oh, I love it so much. But anyway, you get a bit of backstory here. None of it matters because the game was not advanced enough to actually implement anything that you can see on screen. It's meant to be that there was some sort of cataclysm coming and these guys were, their planet was going to get swallowed by the sun. So they had to move to another planet. That doesn't actually happen in the game because it would be unfair for balance reasons. But their mechanic, if we go into the world, which you move, you go back a screen by moving the cursor to the edges of the screen. How weird is that? But that's just how it was back They didn't put a button on screen to go back. You actually had to hover up to the top. And you see how it says exit or esk. You can press escape to go back a screen. It's really weird how it, the game is kind of layered. The screens are layered. I loved it. It's just it's just bizarre. It's just like, it's like, let's mess about with the most the things that we take for granted nowadays. Of, you know, slider bars and scroll wheels and stuff. And stuff. Well, back then they didn't have that. So they had to just be like, what's a, what's a logical way to move between screens to go back a stage? I just move your cursor to the top corner. Weird. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about now. Who cares? Let's move on to the next bit. This is our home planet. Qu Qu Quirsus. How appropriate. And then you got all the buttons for rotating the galaxy. Look at this 3D space that they had to render. Back on MS-DOS. MS-DOS! So let's bring ourselves into line. So we've got our little planet here. We're a little blue giant. There's an oxymoron for you. And we've got these blue lines that travel off in these two directions and this red one here. These are hyper lanes. This is how you move around the galaxy. You don't just fly aimlessly in space. You go through wormholes to get to places. And if we go into that galaxy, this is our, star, our solar system. This is our star system. This is it. Look. You can move it all around. And you can see space in the background. All the distant galaxies that we're not playing in. And you got this grid so you can see where things are. And you can see how high above the sort of zero plane, if you will, we are. So there's the star in the center. Sun... Quirsus. I'm going to pronounce it as Quirsus. And then we've got all these different planets around. These are the planets in our system. And these are the star lanes. And we don't know where they go. We don't know what the name of those planets are yet. Because even though we are a space-bearing race, and we're about to join the space-bearing races of the galaxy, uh, we don't know what a telescope is, apparently. And we've not looked and named anything until we actually find it. But this is our planet, Quirsus 1. The closest one to the sun. And we can go into the planet. And... Uh, we are a civilization that's thousands of years old and we have not conquered any other planet because that makes sense. That was always a thing that I found weird about it. It's like we just own this thing. This is our colony hub. And the way you build on this game is that these squares, all tiles on the map, white ones are just generic squares. Black ones are meant to represent like uninhabitable terrain. You can't build there. There's either like volcanoes or great trenches or the ocean or you just can't build there it's not not buildable on and then the different colored ones there's blue red and green and they represent these three resources at the top here you got a blue square a red square and a green square blue is science red is industry and green is population growth this one here is your population the little red dude with the stick that is a working stick he's a laborer the little yellow guy is unemployed he's on the doll kill him 
and then the green circles are the potential maximum number of spaces that you can actually have. And then over here we've got what current project we're currently building. And look at how big everything is. Everything's got a big square associated with it. There's none of this UI condense it down into its smallest, most compact, minimalistic, modern form. No, no, no. Big buttons. Factory. Agriplot. Laboratory. Big squares. And they got a big scroll wheel down the side here, which is just two buttons. <laughs> you can scroll up and down with. So, what do we go for first? We've got one industry that we're producing, with, represented by a picture, mainly. Another thing that I loved. You could have just put a number there. Could have just had like a little bar and it would have had like a blue symbol for science of like, you know, the atomic structure, an industry one of like a little factory or something, and then a growth symbol of like a sperm. I don't know. Something that would have represented fertility and growth of population or whatever. They could have done, but they didn't. They've got pictures and these pictures change as you get more stuff. Our growth prosperity is one per day. We'll get a new person in 50 days. That's a long time. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to build a agriplot and that'll take 30 days to complete so after 30 days this number is going to change so we'll get people a bit quicker we're back out and we're back out again right up here you got the time how many turns since the start of the game so the turn is currently zero because we've not turned uh, press it once and it, it moves everything one step and another thing that i thought was cool was, is how you turn like if you if i return this to center right that is the default and there's all the planets if you spin, now we've just accelerated 30 turns from the start of the game. If I go back into this, the planets have moved. They actually programmed in that the planets go around the star. And that's important because when we do combat, or when you see ships in the game screen, they actually appear here. There'll be one of the things floating around and you move them around in this kind of real time within the turn-based section. So where your planet is in conjunction with a star lane, can be important if a, if a ship comes in now through this red one it is a lot closer than if it came in from this star system over here and that could have ramifications because if i've got guns on my planet they might have to retreat to get out of range of my guns before i blow the fuck out of them and that's important it's really it's it's so simple but it's so cool i loved it oh, I, I i love this so anyway I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop gushing over it now so we've got a new population and look the plant the plant is now bigger we have bigger plant so we can now get more people quicker. But that did use up our population, so we've got nobody free. We can't do anything yet. We can't build anything because there's nobody to use that building. If I click on here, I just get an OK. I can't build... I can't... No free population. Can't build nothing because there's no one that can work there. We have advanced beyond the age of unemployment. Right? You can't specifically plan something unless there's someone who's going to take that job. That's the only thing that's allowed. Ah, that's not advanced to past the age of unemployment, what's that? We'd have advanced past the age of unproductivity, that would be it. We can't build something unless there is going to be somebody who could work there. That's the right way around. But yeah, now we're going to get somebody in seven days. So originally it was 50, 30 have passed, and now it's going to be within seven. So because we increased the product, the prosperity, that's the, the correct word for it. Hello? Blue's bought me stuff. This is what it's like to be a streamer and get random food. Oh my god, and it's a proper plateau. She's even cut up the lasagna into little bite-sized lasagna pieces for me. Thank you. He's my streamer, everyone. See? So everyone say hi to Blue. <laughs> hi, Chad. Hello, everybody. Oh, there's biscuits and all sorts in here. Great. Am I? I don't feel like it. I feel like I'm doing crap. I'm just... This is just old man shouts at internet. Mmm. Fair. No, you're too late now, chat. She's gone. Mmm, bit of hot sausage roll. Anyway. Um, I'm going to build a factory next. Because, oh, I can't build it yet. I've got to wait. Got to go back. Spin a bit more. There we go. New population. Get a planet. I need a factory because things are taking way too long to build. I'm going to get another population in 17 turns, but I've got to wait until this project's finished before I can build something else. So... A lot of this start of this game, you like, with all other space games, you just start ready to go. You're in the space age. I oh, spook blues ill pog champ streamer. Oh, lil pog champ streamer. I hate every word you just said, PK. Stop hanging out with the children at your school. 
they are having bad effects on you. Ah! Fuck! Oh! Oh, that lasagna's hot. Alright, we're going to leave that for a bit. I may have burnt my tongue. Fuck! <laughs> oh. I think I thought it was going to be like as warmed up as last night's lasagna was because it was like hot enough to eat but damn that is like that's proper smoke I can warm my hands on that Ohio Skibbity Riz Sigma thank you PK thank you for bringing that into my stream and thank you for making me say it out loud because Blue told me that it's good engagement to talk to chat this is why I don't talk to you because you're a freak Nobody clipped that. Nobody clipped me saying that. That cannot exist on the internet. I'm just going to carry on with this. I'm just going to carry on my game now. I'm just going to enjoy playing some Ascendancy. And sharing it with people of the world who don't care about it, but I do. I'm going to build a laboratory now because we haven't been able to research anything yet. Because we're dumb. We don't know what book is. The other st Ooh! I did say I was going to ban PK as soon as I got on, but I haven't done that yet. I'll allow him to live for a little while longer. Mm. Hmm. Right, let's get some research going. Oh yeah, this is an important bit relevant to the game. My species has an activatable special ability. Some of them have passives. Mine's activatable. And it recharges every so many days. My ability... <laughs> you guys are probably like this. <laughs> I wonder how many people are going to hear what I'm about to tell them and think, Ah, oh, fuck, that's just me when I was at school. Their special ability is they put themselves under such enormous amounts of stress that they will complete whatever is the current research task the next turn, regardless of how long was left on it. <laughs> they basically see the deadline and they spend all night working on their... I don't know what you cut their their coursework, their manifesto, their revision. They just get it all done one night. I don't think I'm going to use that yet because well, I can't use that yet because I'm not researching it. Can I choose? Actually, that's a point. Can I choose to research that? And even though I don't have the ability to research, can I just get it? Usability. Oh my god. That could be a challenge run. I could pr I could actually try that as a challenge run for myself. Can I beat the game with the Comanches where I never build any science structures and I just research like one thing every 80 days? Man, that'd be that's a challenge. Never thought about that until now. But whatever. So we research this and this gives us access to build a shipyard and orbital shields orbital structures. It is a bit weird that the symbol for orbital structures up there in the top right or under my mouse, you've got a picture of a planet and then stuff floating around. Orbital structures. Makes sense. The thing that is floating around is something you can research and we haven't researched it yet. They didn't use the shipyard or the orbital shield, which is the thing you get from the research as part of its I I icon. Like, why? <laughs> That's so weird. Whatever. I don't care. Next research, we are going to go for Tonklin Diary, which I'm assuming is the diary of someone very clever who invented these two things. The Tonklin Motor and Tonklin Frequency Analyzer. What do they do? I'll show you eventually. Don't worry. It'll all come. It'll all happen. We finally built a lab, so now we can just start researching stuff just normally. Just with people spending their day job, going in, having a thing. And look! The picture at the top left. Got a prism in it now. We're doing science. We are. We're thinking. I'm going to build more stuff. 12 days until we get another population, so I'm going to build a factory here. Now, because I'm building a factory on a red square, it gives double the output. I built the laboratory on the blue square, so that gives me double the output, so I'm now getting two science instead of one. So building on the colours, very helpful. There we go. We have one free population. Um, do I build another industry thing? No, we get another science. We get some more labobs. More, <coughs> more labobs. More laboratories. There we go. Our researchers have discovered the Tonkling Diary. So now we get access to Tonkling Motor and the Frequency Analyzer. These are ship components. 
And it's the reason, part of the reason, the main reason I think why I love this game is the way you build ships, and we're going to get to that. So we're going to discover interplanetary exploration. So we get access to smaller medium hull ships and a proton shaver. The fuck's a proton shaver? You'll see. Skip past all this. Right, we now need to get some space stuff. So I'm going to set an enormous build structure of a shipyard, which is going to take a whole 80 days to build. Which, considering we've got two factories, that's pretty fast. <laughs> got that. What do we build next? Um, we're going to need a star lane drive so we can travel between the stars. And look at the little research symbol. There's a little dude going through the weavy, wibbly wobbly fabric of space. Next. Um, I mean, even this research screen. Look at this, this giant sort of DNA helix type thing. They could have just done a list. They could have just had a series of buttons that just appear when you've researched the previous thing of like, now you can research the next thing, click the button. They put this 3D, because it is 3D, because it spins. They put a 3D model in the game. Why? Because it's cool. It looks cool. It's part of the aesthetic. The next thing I'm going to choose to research is this one, Gravity Control which gives us the Quantum Singularity Launcher, which is technically a weapon. But the reason why is because I'm playing as the Chimachis or the Kamachis or the however you because I'm playing as the Lizard People, the Leeple, um, in a few days I will be able to instantly research this the following day. So it's not going to take 187 days. It'll take less than that. Oh, there we go. Scientist report. We now have all technologies needed to build our first ship to explore other stars. This includes generators, engines and a star lane drive. Generators provide power for all components on a ship, engines provide movement within a star system, and star drives provide m movement through star lanes. With continued research, we'll be able to improve these. Ships can be built by clicking on an empty orbital square on, the pl on a planet that has a shipyard. So that's why I said build a shipyard, because we're going to need it. And there we go. We've amassed our special ability. I'm going to use that. Uh, next turn. There we go. Gravity control. So as you can see, as we go further down, these start to get ludicrous with the number of days required because they require so many research points and at the start of the game you obviously don't have them. That's how a 4x game works. 440 days for that one, 854 for that one, and they're cool bits of technology that do things but for the, we're going to take a step back. We're going to go back up to here to Xenobiology to get the Xeno Archaeological Dig Site. Arguably the most overpowered technology in the game because of how it works but we'll, you'll see that eventually. We have a shipyard and I have a piece of sausage roll. It's going in my face. Hmm. Mm mm mm. That's good sausage roll. I might need more of them. Um, we're going to build a ship, even though I'm not really ready to, because my production is crap. But I want to show you this. The whole point of this is to showcase the game to you, not to you know as a you know, like a here's me playing Ascendancy through to completion. I ain't gonna complete this. But this is how you make a ship. Orbital square, used to build orbital structures, such as shipyards and ships. So we're going to build we're going to build a ship. This is the ship creation screen. Here's a little picture of the ship. You can change the whole size over here. So we've got medium ships and small ships. This is what's currently selected. And these are all the spots on the ship. So when you build a ship, you actually build a ship. You don't just go into like a screen and just say like, oh, I want a colony ship. And it goes, yeah, there you go. Here's a colony ship. Piss off. You actually have to design the ship in its entirety. So if I fill this thing with proton shavers, which are generators, you'll see up here, a little symbol appears. You've got half a symbol there. And then that finishes it. And then one and a half, two, two and a half. That's how much power this ship has access to, to use on all of its components when I choose to use them out in space. So that's filled to the max with power, but it can't do anything because it's got no engines, it's got no guns, it's got no shit, it's got nothing, it's just full of energy. So we would just launch a thing out into space that can't move or do anything. That's a bit shit. So we're going to put an engine on it, so I'm going to put a Tonklin motor. There you go, so I've sacrificed half of the energy that comes from the proton shaver and now we have half a movement. And we also want to go and explore space, so I'm going to stick a Starlane drive on. And, because I'm OCD in that way, 
I'm not OCD, do, but I just like saying it. I'm going to rearrange this because I don't like the fact that the generators are split up. We're going to do that. There you go. That looks nice. So we now have three generators. We've got a bit of movement, and we've got a star lane drive, which just means that we are allowed to go through star lanes, so we can actually explore space. Back out of that. I said back out of that. Name of your ship. I'm going to name this in honour of PK. There we go. So that'll take 42 days to build. And we've just discovered xenobiology. Hooray, hooray. It was a beautiful day. Uh, we should get this one next. Environmental encapsulation allows us to build colony bases as well as the first shield, the ion wrap, and a colonizer. <clears throat> there we go. Skip a bit. We've researched that. A lot of this game is just click end turn and just wait until something interesting happens. Let's go for advanced chemistry. This will give us access to the next um, agri-plot, like the next bit of prosperity building, is what they call it. Sorry, it's lasagna time. I need to eat some lasagna. I'm really hungry. Hope that's not coming through on the mic. In fact, I'm going to play for a little bit, but I'm going to just turn the mic off while I eat. <clears throat> so just enjoy what I'm clicking and doing around and see if you can figure out what's going on. Think of this as like a really crap silent tutorial. Which there are tutorials in this game, and they play out like a normal game with little pop-ups on them. And when you finish the tutorial, you can just continue playing that game. It's quite nice. But it loads up as something separate. It's kind of weird. Anyway. I'm going to have to come back for this one. This is important. The first ship, the Pirate King ship, the Gremlin, has been completed. So if we go to the planet, I can now click on the ship and I can tell it to leave orbit. And it's now gone. It's no longer here. Where's it gone? I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, for the time being, your prosperity has dropped down to one because the prosperity goes down as there's more people because there's more food that's needed. I've always found that weird. In, in all space games or in all strategy games, the amount of food that are a civilization or a race or a whatever subsect of you know a species you are however much food they make is how much population they've got and yet we're not seeing that in the real world are we the first world countries all the richest with the most abundance of food and we have the uh, some of the lowest population growth it's weird isn't it but they didn't think about that when they first made these games ominous and serious foreshadowing Anyway, I'm going to build that. I'm going to build an agriplot. Let's get some more people. Now, on the main screen, you'll see this little arrow. That tells us that we've got a ship in this system. So if we go into our star system... There he is! PK's in the game. We've got a little gremlin here. And when I click on him, I get a new symbol because I move around the galaxy using this. So I can click somewhere out in space here. And then I can choose how high or how low I want him to go. I choose where he goes in the three-dimensional space. So I can position myself to target things from a certain distance. So I can say, right, you've got a star drive on you. There, there we go. Star, star lane drive, Tonkin mode set, proton shaver. I want you to go to this star lane. And he moves. And there you can see... Up here in the top right, we've got the bubbles, which is his HP. And then we've also got the power meter. That's how much power he used in one go to move that distance. Now, if you get more power, it means obviously that bar will decrease slower. If you get a better engine, it means that you will move further for the same amount of power. Right? That's how that works. So, I'm going to tell him to do that again. And I can go up to here and I can hit repeat move. Now, because our first ship is obviously very limited in its te technological capabilities, it's turned grey now because it's run out of power for this turn, for this day. And it didn't even make it out of the solar system. That's how long it took to get there. 
So we'll carry on, move a turn. You don't have to do this, it will just automatically go to where you told it to go, but I just like to follow it. Head into the star lane. There he goes. He's now entered the star lane. And if we look on the map, we'll see that the arrow, you can't really see it all that well, but it has moved. Actually, nope, I can't do that. No, never mind, I can't show you that. Uh, oh, there we go, I can turn the planets off. There we go. So you can see the arrow's there, but it's not quite on the star anymore. It was like poking out here, it's now moved in a bit. And the reason for that is it's in the star lane. And as we tick the turns, it's slowly travelling down the star lane. Oh, Agriplot done. Excellente. Let's get more science. We need science. And we've just finished advanced chemistry, so we can now start upgrading our um, agriplots to these artificial hydro hydroponifiers. Sorry about that. Eating lasagna. Very important. Gremlin. We have discovered the Atropos. Atropos? System. Whatever. It contains three planets and three star lanes. We are awaiting further orders. So if we go to the system. Here's a new place that we can have a look around. Can't see the Gremlin because he's above the screen. But we can tell him to go and explore some more stuff. So I'm just going to tell him to go into that star lane and have a look. You can click on the planets to see what's on them. And it tells you the layout of the tiles. So this is a very tiny planet, eeny teeny weeny, and that means it can only have a few people on it. Obviously, there's only so much room. But we're looking for a very specific type of planet. Either one that is big and has lots of white or coloured squares on so we can build on it, or, and if I can go back to our home planet and see if there's any around here. No, there's not. Okay, we've not found what I'm looking for just yet. So let's continue. In fact, let's build another ship. Let's build a proper a proper ship. Let's build something that's going to cover all our bases. It can do a bit of shooting, it can do a bit of colonising, it can do a bit of exploring, a bit of everything. So, stick on some proton shavers, so it's got some power. Ooh, we have a new um, engine. The Tonklin motor provides half. The Ion Banger provides a full but does improve it does take longer to build because obviously it's more complex components put on a star lane drive so we can go between the stars we'll stick a colonizer on because I'm looking for a particular planet to colonize let's give it some quantum singularity launchers they do one damage each that's quite nice uh, we'll put on a shield and then we'll also give it a scanner so that it can scan nearby ships. The scanner's really weak, like it gave a quarter of a scanner bar. Very small amount of scanning capability, the frequency analyzer. It basically picks up like background radiation. Not very good. Oh, you can hold shift actually, and you can see what these things do. They give you a description. There you go. Have a read of that. I'm gonna eat more lasagna. <clears throat> right, sorry about that. I've finished my lasagna. So yeah, Tonkin Frequency Analyzer. Basically, it doesn't, cost, it doesn't cost power, but it picks up little bits of information that ships leak. So we're going to build that. That seems like a decent first ship. We've got, we're covering all the different fields, and we can colonise something, which is important. I'm going to name this. What's the first ship called? Let's go for the Growlithe. 
Because Spectral Growlithe was in the chat first. <clears throat> Not the first one that I saw. Alright, skip ahead of it. Uh, research superconductivity. So we've got access to planetary shields. And we've also got access to the mass barrage gun, which is the first gun in the game. We skipped ahead and we got one that was further down here because we are super scientists. So we have, we have just researched an inferior gun. Isn't that great? Let's research the Fourier missiles, another inferior weapon. But it opens up stuff that we need later on down the line, so it is relevant. Let's keep going. Alright, now we're getting into some of the more juicier technologies that aren't at the start of the game, so... Uh, do I have access to my ability? I do! Cool, let's choose something really good. Uh, what do we want? What do we want? Let's go for the orbital docks. Even though we've got a shipyard, you can't refit a ship in a shipyard, you can only build them, which is a bit weird. So you have to get the orbital docks. And then the molecular tie down... Excuse me, is a... It's a facility... It's a... What would you call it? A ship module. It's going to say facility. It's a ship module, and it does something specific. In fact, can I check it from here? Will it tell me? No. I have to research it first, but it's good. So if I now go to our special ability and hit usability, we've now researched that technology. All the stress that would have taken us probably close to a year, we did overnight. Uh, oh, one of my favourite ones. I love the gravimetric catapult. Does it tie down molecules? You know what, Krauser? Go fuck yourself. It does. We're going to get this one. Power conversion. Don't know how we're converting power at the moment. Obviously we're not using squares. That's your problem. We've arrived in the Trovoracon system. Contains only one planet and three star lanes. Let's have a look at this planet. Jesus Christ, that is a big planet and that is really close to its star. Good lord. And it's crap. <clears throat> not interested. And we have seen... We've got a little a nice little triangle here. So you might be wondering, why have I gone down the blue star lanes, but not the red ones? The red ones take longer to go down. They require a better star lane drive to run at normal speed, but you can go through them with your normal star drive, it just takes longer. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to head back to Atropus, and we're going to go and check out what that other blue star lane is, because it will be quicker. Spook can tie down... Do oh, you get the picture. <coughs> tie you down in a minute. I'll tie you down and do things to you that you've never had done to you before. Like, get a bit of self-respect. I'm going to go for momentum deconservation. Whatever that is. Uh, back in the Atropa system. So let's now go down here. Down here. I can just say automatic and it'll go. Mm. Yeah, make the most of this, by the way, because when Blue comes back on stream, you're not going to be allowed to say a lot of the things that you probably want to say to me. And feel free to ask questions. So it says, ask me anything still obnoxiously on the screen. I am trying my best to read, chat. It's not something that I'm used to. Whilst playing the game, I should say. Can I say swears? Pretty sure you can. I don't think that's ever been a thing that you can't do. Give me the planet that I'm looking for. Come on. Ah, man. Oh. Wow. That's not good. See that symbol? Someone's put a blocker on this star lane. Someone's gained access to that technology, which is really far in, in the future. We're locked off. I can't show you one of the best things in this game. Ah, that's that's annoying. All right, we're going to go back through the star lane. Let's go home. Fuck this. Fuck this shit. Fuck Loxor. Piece of crap. Um, let's go back to our home system. Yep, nope. researched. Um, let's go for... We're going to get our ability again soon. Let's go for the mass phasing. What does get parked mean, Spook? Um, there you go. I'm just going to do that. <clears throat> We're going to carry on. Right, so when we get our ability back in 12 days... We can instantly research that. And the Growlithe is ready! We can go. Let's find a decent planet. I think this one was okay. No, I was wrong. I was a bit wrong. These suck! Why have I got sucky planets? Is there a 
Just do someone. No, look at all the black spaces. You can't build on them. They're uninhabitable terrain. There's a poo. Oh, why you do this to me, game? How about down in Luxor? That's that's decent. We're going there. We're going to Luxor. So we have to go through Atropus. Look at how much further he moved then in one go. See, we actually made it out of the solar system with half our energy. That's how much progress we've made in just such a few turns. Head on down there. There we go. Can use our ability. Technology. Uh, oh, we can't go any further down the tree until we've unlocked something else. So, let's go back up. Let's get this one. Advanced interferometry. Which gives us a new uh, analyzer, a new radar, sorry. And an invasion module. Things that you need to conquer other planets. We have an agenda. Let's send the gremlin through the red star lane. It's going to take one million years to get there. In fact, we'll be able to calculate how long it takes, because we know what the start date is. There you go. It starts on 4.15. Let's see how long it takes to get there. Right, Growlithe, head down to Luxor. Research that. We've got access to something new. Is that here? Yep. There's the cloaking. You see that orbital cloaker? That's the thing from the image above. Why is it there? Who knows? Who cares? I'm always dubious about this one because the cloaking technology means that it cloaks stuff that's either on the planet, um, in the space, or on your ship, respectively. But you're up against AI. Who do, who's not going to call out the AI for cheating? Like, you know what's on my ship. Don't, don't pretend you don't. We know you do. Let's go for hyperlogic. Better research campuses, the intellect sc scrambler, and X-ray mega glasses. Which is the dumbest looking contraption I've ever seen, but I love it. So we're going to go with that. Oh! Unidentified ship. Respond. Who's this? God, I love the music. This is the Fladentry. Their special thing is that they can heal their ships out in space at the push of a button because they are made of liquid. So they can kind of reform themselves. Sort of like the T, whatever it was from Terminator. I don't remember the number. T-34. It must have been. I'm not going to bother trying to get stuff with them because um, one of the issues that I did have with this game is that the diplomacy is kind of balked. But they are waiting for us to talk and they're going, num de dum is this Foxy? Oh my god, all the FNAF references recently. What is happening with this stream? Fight them. I probably will end up having to. This will this will be a thing. Right. The Growlithe. Head to Luxor 3. This is the one we want. Yeah, this is the decent planet. We've entered Luxor 3. Right. Create colony. You two don't have to be here. I, I can sit here and talk to myself. I don't mind. I'm going to build it here. Because it's next to a green and it's next to a red. Yeah, you guys do need an adult. You're older than me and blue are! Horrendous. I'm going to build here. And we're going to get started and we're going to start building some agriplots so that this thing can function. I'm going to tell the growler to leave orbit. Where did the... I think the AI came from the red star line, so I'm going to head back to defend. Daddy Spooky's letting us be naughty. Yeah, you wouldn't get away with this with Blue. The timeouts are becoming. Should be wielding that ban hammer with a vengeance. We've not heard anything from the previous planet. Oh, I forgot to set a project here, and the population has just been growing exponentially. Uh oh. Let's get some factories going. Uh, let's get some factories going here. So, as much as I like this tiled setup, it's um, a bit tedious when you get a lot of planets. 
it is a bit tedious. It's cool at first because you're like, oh, match the colours. Put the red things on the red squares and put the blue things on the blue squares and then the white squares are just for whatever you need a bit of extra of. Oh, it's fun. But then when you've got like 15 planets and you're trying to manage an empire, you're like, I really don't care, dude. Just, just, build, it, just build it where it makes sense. It's pissing me off. I'm going to set this guy to live up here. Next to the Starling. There we go. That'll do. What else do we need more of? We don't really need signs because we can just get signs every 80 days. Kind of redundant. Let's get some more factories. There we go. Research. Um, do I want to switch gears from that? Probably. Let's go for light bending. So we can get the wave scatterer and the replenisher. Oops. There we go. Um, I don't really want those. The electromagnetic pulsar and the oral, oral cloud constructor, you say. Let's go for bombs. Came for blue, stayed for spook. That's how my mind works. Let's get a few more factories. Oh, who the fuck is this? Another unidentified ship. Ah, the Nimbuloids. Beautiful. Look at this art, though, that they made for such a pixelated game. It's a beautiful, like, sunrise over some planet. You can see a planet in the background. There's even the rings that you get from when you're looking through a lens and the light's reflecting in that weird way it does, which I don't know how to explain, but you know what I'm talking about. It's just a beautiful picture that's been sort of lowered in resolution quality to fit in the game. It's so beautiful. Anyway, I'm not going to bother interacting with them. Right, I'm going to BRB. I'm going to leave you with the music because I really should go to the toilet. I can't sit here and give myself a water infection. So, back in like 30, 50 seconds. Thank you. 
You lot better not be doing what you think I think you're doing. Do I have to? I have to intervene, don't I? Am I gonna have to intervene? What the fuck's been happening? <sighs> can hear? Sp yes, you can hear my Discord notifications because I'm not a proper streamer. I don't have everything set up so that it listens for specific audio. God, why? This is why laws exist because you lot just can't be trusted. There you go. Look, I've muted Discord now. You can all. I'm not reading anything that you sent me, so you can all just fuck off. Right, where was I? I'm going to talk to you about what I wanted to do with this game when I remade it and the things that I am looking to do with Godot. And this this can just play it in the background and I'll just comment on it when something something relevant happens. Where the fuck am I? What is happening? There you are, Nimbuloid's medium ship. So you came from over there. And you keep getting moved back through the red system, which clearly means that there is a particular race in the game that can push everyone back through their lanes and you can't do anything about it. So, this ship has got to go. Bye Gremlin, I'm killing PK in the game, this is what you get. Goodbye, dead. Didn't you get me to play this one time when I got my ass handed to me? Yes, you did, Stanger. That was fun to watch. I'm glad you remembered. Played it on your PC downstairs. Right, we've got a lot more production on this planet now. So, we can build a much better ship. And we've got access to much better technology. So, let's get a ship. And we're going to go for a medium ship. Something bigger. I just love this building phase. It's a fun game, you just suck at it. Yeah, well, I mean... You get. You only played it once. You can't be expected to be good at it. I mean, the first time I played Master of Orion, I got my ass fucking handed to me. I don't understand, Kay, how you can live with a woman and still be so horny. Does every room in your house need to be turned into a shower room so you can just be constantly under the pressure of cold water? Right, we now have these new generators, the subatomic scoops. These give us a full power each, so we get a lot more power on the ship. We've obviously got the ion banger, shut up K, meaning that we can move a lot further. Uh, I'm going to hold off on looking into what the other ships have at this point. He needs one of those VR glasses and just have corn <laughs> all the time, <laughs> basically. I can't remember what the range of these things are if they tell you what the range is. Short range, long range. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for some missiles. Just a couple of furry missiles on. The wave scatterer... Uh, this is a particular type of shield. You haven't seen me use shields yet because we've not had any um, anyone attack us. But when you're on the main screen, you turn shields on or off and they use up power immediately. And then for every turn that you keep them on, they still use the same amount of power and they reduce the damage of incoming attacks. Sometimes completely. Sometimes they reduce them to zero. Sometimes they don't. The Wave Scatterer is a very weak defense unit, but it's always active. So it basically just raises the kind of armor of your ship, I suppose, is a, is a good way of putting it. So I'm going to put one of those on. See, look at that. One quarter of a shield bar. If I replaced it with uh, the concussion shield, that gives me half, but I have to turn it on. So we're just going to have like a, just a little bit of extra defense. Just a spicy amount of extra defense. And then look at these. These are the weird modules. And this is part of why I love the ships on this game. Because they do specific things. 
They have a purpose. It's not just like, oh, it's a gun. It does damage. Uh, it's a shield. It blocks damage. They do things. So if we go to the molecular tie down, when fired at a ship, it temporarily immobilizes it by dampening its reaction, dampening the reactions powering its engines. So it stops them from moving. So you can put this on your ship, it uses a certain amount of power, because it's a module. You fire it at a ship and then they can't run away, and then on your subsequent turns you can attack them. That's cool. The gravimetric catapult. It takes your starting position in comparison to the, the nearest sun, so the sun in the very centre, and it moves your ship to the complete opposite side of the sun. Gravimetric catapult catapults you around the sun. I just love that. It's it's inventive. It's an inventive way of moving the ship. You don't use engines. You use a separate module for it. The replenisher is good. It fully recharges all the weapons that are aboard your ship. Its installation involved. Uh, the installation involved is expensive, um, but it can be a lightsaver in an intensive battle. And this is true. Being able to get all of your guns back after they're fired once is super helpful. I'm not going to put it on this ship because it does cost a lot of power to use, but it is there if we need it. Um. And then I think we're going to put on three star lane drives because I'm going to see if I can breach through to the other side of um, <clears throat> this red star lane. And if I'm going to do that, I don't think I need as many guns that are on here. as. Uh, let's go for <clears throat> more missiles and another and the one engine, just two generators. I think that should be enough. I am banging your mum. Kay is physically crying. How? K is a very special kind of individual. <laughs> How do you make yourself laugh so hard at your mom jokes now? It's 2024, nearly 25. Fucking hell. Right. In honor of K, I'm going to call this your mum. There you go. You're in the game now, K. Welcome aboard, your mum. Got a, got a factory. Um, I'm actually not going to bother building any more research facilities, if I'm honest, because we just, just this having this special ability is just too good. Do, 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 do. Let's go for another agri plot. But yeah, the things that I wanted to do with this game, um, I wanted to create an initiative system with the battle because at the moment, even though you haven't seen it yet. Each empire can only move one ship at a time. There's no initiative order for like all ships to be moved based on their speed or anything. So, if I was to move this ship, the enemy would move a ship, then I would move a ship. The other ships don't then get their turn in initiative. It's like I can keep moving the same ship every single turn until it's run out of stuff to do. So technically you can have one ship that just goes flying off until it's run out of power and then the next ship moves and then the next ship and it just, it's not very realistic. And it's, it's certainly not very strategic. You can't be very tactical in where you position stuff. So I wanted to do something like that. Introduce a ship initiative order so that you could maybe put modules on the ship that improve like accuracy of nearby ships. You could have stuff where you can deliberately move ships out of alignment then for a purpose, that kind of stuff. I wanted to scrap this whole thing with the tiles. Because like I said, it's fun, but it gets very tedious very quickly. Like, I've only got two planets at the moment. And every so often I have to keep checking on them. <clears throat> Where is taking... Is that planet still building a ship? Yeah, 13 days until completion. Oh, new new people. More people to kill. The Meebs! Them dank holy Meebs. They are enormous single-celled organisms that reproduce rapidly via mitosis. And that's all i got to say about that. There we go. Your mum's complete. An option to queue buildings would be good. Saves having to go back and check every time something's done. Another good one, yes. Building queues. Something that we take for granted in modern games, but at the time, they didn't think about that in here. Right. Your mum has left orbit. I hope this is amusing to you, Kay. Uh, let's get... I don't need any more... No, prosperity's good. Keep building factories. Right. 
Let's get your mum to go through the Red Starling. Oh, where are you moving to? Oh, you're leaving. What a fucking bust, y'all. The more star lane drives you have on a ship, the faster it goes through <clears throat> star lanes, but we're still suffering that penalty because it's a red star system. Hey, Rosa. We have amassed the ability to uh, have anxiety, I guess. That's probably the best way of describing it. Is there any research that I want more? Let's get this one because it's ex super expensive. I don't know if Rosa would constitute herself as an adult. She's a definitely a hyperfixating, responsible in certain aspects kind of person. <laughs> uh, what should we get next? You see, the, the number of days that it says now is pointless because every 80 days I get something. So I basically just have to pick what's the next thing I'm going to research in 80 days. Let's go for the research campus next. Uh, I suppose now we should start thinking about defences. Because we're probably going to get somebody just say, I'm pissed off with you, time to die. And we have no defences set up. That's really bad. Um, let's start by... Was there no greens on this planet that I built on? Oh, I guess not. Alright, well let's start getting some... Artificial hydroponifiers. <clears throat> because we are very low on population. Very low on population. Missile base, so we can shoot stuff in orbit. Handy. Uh, while this has got no population, I am going to delete this one and then rebuild a better one. So I can start building immediately. I don't have to wait for a population to start building that. I hope this guy gets to the end. Because there's a certain species in this game. I can't remember which one it is. Whether it's the... I think it's the Arboreals actually. The plant people. I think they can block off people. Or they can... No, they're the ones that are blocking the red star lane down the bottom. Where all the all the AI have converged. You see all these arrows. That's where they've converged. Because they can't get through that red star lane. But their, their AI is programmed to go and check out down there. And they're permanently blocked from it. It might be the Shevar that... Any ship that is in a star lane. It bumps them back to the start. That's their ability. And I believe they're in the game because my the gremlin couldn't get through far enough. It took him more days to get through than it does for their ability to recharge. And as soon as it's on cooldown, the AI just uses it. Because why wouldn't they? We might break through up there. We might get through. We're getting closer. Uh, yeah, let's get another artificial hydroponifier just to keep the product the prosperity up very high. Uh, we need some more defences here, some more orbital shields. I don't quite know how the orbital shield works as a thing floating in space, because how can you block the entirety of a planet? You know what I mean? That's a, that's a big ask. Oh, we, we breached through. Welcome to the Yorbans system. These must be the Nords in the north. Hello, welcome to our planet. So we've got the Fladentry here, and no one else. Can have a look at their planet. <clears throat> They've already got the research campus. That's what we're currently researching. And they're building another one. Interesting. Still not found the thing that I thought we would find. Did I put a colonizer on this? I didn't, did I? No, this is just a, a very dangerous scout. So I think what we're going to do... When this 13 days is up, I'm going to build the orbital shipyard. And we're going to refit the Growlithe. We're going to give it a new purpose. Okay, that's that one done. Right. Orbital docks. 25 days. That's not too bad. And let's tell you. Someone else building my star system. The did. The Fladentry built here. The bastards. I'll have to conquer that. Which I can do quite easily with the Growlithe, actually. We'll get them to do that. Because fuck them. I don't give a shit. Do you give a shit? I don't give a shit. The wet people can cry me a river. Ha. <laughs> Another orbital base to defend ourselves. Because there's a lot of activity down here. Wait, what am I... Oh, wait. 
Oh yeah, there we go. I was going to say, I was like, they're in the middle of the sun. No, they're not. There you go. You can see all the ships there blocking the lane symbol. They're all trapped. What dumbasses. Alright, back out of that. Do, 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 do. Uh, discovered the Ribulon. Mmm! And it's a homeworld because it's got their symbol. This is the Fledentry homeworld. And they've got two orbital shields. Yep, that makes sense. They haven't got any surface shields, so all I would need is one invader, and I could take out their planet. Got a big fucking moon. And this one, hmm. I haven't found a single one of the things I thought I would find on these planets. It's really weird. Normally I find them all the time. Right, there we go. Let's refit the Growlith. So first thing we can do is an immediate upgrade to the energy. Bang, look at that. I think we're going to need the three star lane drives to get through... To the other side because they wouldn't have done it before and then we're going to cause some havoc let's put a colonizer on let's put two colonizers and one invasion module on and in fact by that logic we don't actually need that many generators let's just have the one because these don't specifically use power you just use them let's do that 20 days to refit uh, and this is obviously now the Growlithe 2, which means it's called the Arcanine. Yes, yes, yes. Free pop. Let's build Hydroponifier. Oh, here we go. It begins. Here we go. We are going to war with you. Your funeral. The Arcanine is nearly ready and will fuck you up. There we go. We've now got access to Hyperlogic. And now we've got these weird symbols down here. You can re research things like Alien Hospitality. And what that picture is showing is a bunch of um, like laboratory beakers sat on chairs talking to each other. That's how they represent different species talking. <laughs> It's so weird, but I love it. And the scientists take over. Look at all the flasks! Yes! <laughs> the scientists will take over! <laughs> so dumb. Let's research the molecular disassociator next. I don't think it's a tech that we would necessarily use as a weapon, but it will unlock f things further down the line. Your mum has arrived at Yorbins again, so let's go the other way down this star lane. Did we check out these? If you didn't, I don't remember checking these out. They're no good at planets anyway. Alright. Ah, one day. I was going to say, I was like, I'm sure that should have completed by now. There we go. The Arcanine is ready. And we are immediately going to cause chaos. Because fuck them. Oh, a bit of load there. That's a load of it. I suppose we could start getting some research campuses because there might be the chance we could research something within 80 days worth. Who knows? Uh, da, 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 da. Fledentry. Yeah, that was a really unwise decision to say you're going to go to war with me when you have a planet here that I can just take over immediately. I know why they've taken over this planet. It isn't, it isn't just to encroach on my territory. The number of spaceships you're allowed is one per planet that you own with an extra one if it's a capital. So I get two from my starting system. I get one more from Luxor, because that's an, a star system that I own. And they're trying to encroach on this territory, but because it is owned by more than one person, I don't think you're allowed. I can't remember the uh, the specifics of it now. Where's ships? We have two ships. We're allowed one more. So I can't remember. If I colonise something up here, because there's one in there, we'll have to see what the math is. I can't, can't fully remember that one. We have entered orbit. Invade. There you go. We now have three colonies in our empire. We've kicked them out. White square, white square, white square. Is these all white squares? I think they are. Okay. Uh, we're going to build some defences so that it doesn't get taken back off us immediately. <clears throat> and we'll send the Arcanine back to the home system. Uh, just to give it that invasion module again. So when we get to the other side, if we want to, we can take something out over there. Because the Arcanine doesn't have any weapons on it, but our other ship will be able to support. Why have I got, like, trapped wind in my throat? What the hell's going on? I'm dying, Gartu. Whoa, what the... Hang on a minute. There were some orbital shields here. What's 
Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What happened? There was definitely stuff here, right? Oops, nope, not that. Oh! Who's that? Someone's... One of these guys is taking shots at the at the blockade. They're trying to break through. Interesting. Right. Um, oh, it's 16 days to refit. Uh, to finish waiting this research campus. Nah, fuck it. I don't care. We want this guy to go now. So, invasion module. Take nine days. Still keep it as the Archonite. It's still the same model. We're, just, we're essentially just restocking. We're not refitting. So, leave orbit. Let's get some defences up on our main planet before that becomes a problem. Well, <laughs> your mum's in Feculon. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Still nothing here. Man, this galaxy is devoid of interesting stuff. What the hell's going on? Oops, I don't need another orbital docks, thank you very much. Uh, da, 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 yeah, let's just do all the all the micromanaging. Intransigent! You are making me really want to play Orion or Stellaris. Yeah, well, I might stick a Master of Orion on next, I don't know. It's also got a good soundtrack, and I am going through games that I did used to play. Either that or Stronghold. I don't know, yeah, actually... I'll probably call this in about 10 minutes and try maybe the last game that I will play for the session. What do you want to see? Master of Orion or Stronghold? What do you reckon? Oh, there's some... Oh my god, look at that. That is the mother load. That's the kind of planet you want. I think these are referred to as like cathedral planets. But man, they're sick. That's what I was looking for. Look at that. That's a Xeno archaeological dig site, and it's a really cool mechanic in this game. Normally, you find more of these, but if you build a colony base on this planet, you can then build a special tile called the Xeno archaeological dig site, which was this thing that we got way back at the start of the frigging game. That. You build that on top of it, and you dig up a really advanced piece of technology, something from, like, the bottom of the tree. So you get access to this one really cool thing that you can use. It could be, like, a building that you put on your planets. It could be a module that you put on your ships. But it's something amazing that you get really early on that you can use to your advantage. And it's not OP because, like, other civilizations can do the same thing. It's really cool. You could probably balance it a bit more by putting one on everybody's starting planet. And then, like, they've got to work towards, you know, digging it up. So everyone gets at least one thing. But I just I just love that idea that you can get something really good really early. You know, just to mix things up. Because some things are... It could be, like, a really good engine. But because of how much power it uses, you can have a really good scout that can go and check out the galaxy and go and explore around and can never be caught by anybody. But you can't really put anything else on because of how much power it would use. But it's, it's a choice. It's a decision that you can choose to make. And when you get better and better ships you'll be able to incorporate it with uh, less of a penalty because other technology will have started to catch up with it. It's really cool. Really cool idea. I love it. <clears throat> uh, we are running out of space for people. So we need to start building some habitats. There you go. Made Paul. Thank you, Blue. See, Blue in the background there. Blue has become the new curls. Oh, new people. Mmm. Unguma. The, the bug people. All squishy and bleh. Horrible. Yeah, I don't really want to talk to you. Who am I at war with? It's the pink, isn't it? Yeah, I'm at war with pink. All right. Did I not move you? I didn't. Fuck. Head through to Yorbins. Yorbin Dorbin. Florigan Dorbin Dorbin. Let's get an orbital base on here. Um, You head back actually because we're going to need some firepower if we're going to take over the people that are in uh, Flodentry's main area. I do want to show off some combat in this because I think the combat is interesting. It could just be better. Yeah, one of them. 
it's good, but it's not great. And I don't think it would take too much tweaking to make it great. I keep instinctively using the scroll wheel. The scroll wheels weren't around back then. This was back in the days when the the mice, the mouses, the mooses, the meeses that we had, had little boiled egg yolks that they rolled around on. Remember that? And you'd have to take it out and clean it because it got covered in fluff from your mouse pads. Man. The daily struggles that we had. So. This planet is uninhabited. Didn't they have... Ah, yeah, you see, they've got... They've got defences up now. They're like, yeah, we, we know. Shit's about to get real. Um, well, in the meantime, then. Uh, let's just go and hang out way above the centre. So we are out of the firing range of anything that they could have. Have you guys actually voted 50-50 on the poll? Have you done that? Why would you do this to me? How could you do this to me? I thought by asking me to do a stream you wanted to make this place better. I thought that you were looking for an improvement. Seems that you just want to fall into your old habits. I know where some of you live. Remember that. Right, we nearly have our backup arriving. We now have our backup arriving. There we are! Right. Are there any Fladentry here? No. Let's check the... No, they don't have any ships in their home system. So let's have a look at this. That's a decent planet. That is a less decent planet. We're going to take over one of their planets now. This is going to happen. It's time to die. Let's move in. I don't know if I'm within range there. It would also be nice to have a range like identifier or the ability to research it so that you know when you're within range of stuff. That would have been another cool thing to add in. So if I click on this guy now, this is how combat works. This is how you actually would use your ships. So I click on whatever weapon that I want to activate. So furry missiles. And then I choose the target. That is my turn of attacking. And then... The Nimbuloids move, and then the Mebs, Mebs moved, and then the Unguma move, and then it's back to me again. So, your mum, we've depleted that Foreign Missile. It's gone. We've used it up this turn. We have to wait for it to reload, which is tomorrow. So, send in another one. And this pink circle is what we're trying to remove. We can't go into orbit while this pink circle is there, because those are the orbital shields. That's what we're trying to take down. And if we click on the planet, you'll see that they're still there. We don't know how much health they've got. And I've only just realised that they have wave scatterers. I've never noticed that in the past. <laughs> All the time I've had this game, those are those are the the wave scatterers. It's that. I never saw that before. Ah, uh, even after all this time. Let's take another shot. Oh. Oh, I've never seen this. They've actually, I've actually seen the moment they've gone around a planet. I think they're going to try and colonise that. We didn't manage to take out one of the shields this turn. So, skip ahead. Uh, orbital base has been finished. Excellente. Let's build another one. No, no. Don't build one then. We could build another ship, actually. Let's design another ship. Let's, let's, let's make a weird, interesting ship. Let's go to the medium. Let's go with some subatomic scoops. And annoyingly, because we need to get into the action, we do have to build three of them. But then let's look at some of these these other things that we've got. We could have just an all-guns-blazing ship with the Replenisher. Give it an Ion Banger. And then let's load up the... I think the Electromagnetic Pulsar actually has several shots. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one can fire multiple times. You have to read the description and try and work out what it does, which again, not great for a modern from a modern gaming perspective. You kind of want to know things um, in their entirety, especially when you're making a strategic or a tactical decision. It's like when it says it makes rapid fires, fire shots, or it, it you know, it takes uh, a short time to reload. You're like, well, how long? How many shots? In what space of time? I need to know these things. What makes these we weapons different other than just the, the symbol that you put on? Like, look at that. That's a crap little symbol. But if I can use that eight times, that means it's got two damage worth. It's just over a longer period. So, but I think I remember this one being one that you can shoot multiple times. So, there we go. What do we name this one? Oh. We'll call this the 50-50. There you go. A species has massed enough energy. Excellent. Name it Celery Stick. Why Celery Stick? I mean, I could rename it. Renaming it isn't an issue. It's on my desk. I'm, I feel I've missed something in the chat. Name it Celery Stick. I loved that show as a kid. Yeah, that was so fun. What Celery Stick is on my desk? What are you... Wait, what? What did I miss? Something happened there. Anyway. Oh, we got access to... Oh! Advanced exploration, we get the Star Lane hyperdrives, that's to go through the red Star Lanes and the large ship hull. We're redoing that ship. That is the technology that we want. Oh, hell yes. Next, there we go. Instantly research, thanks to anxiety. Uh, let's get, let's go back to that one. So, let's go back to our planet. Building a ship. Nah, you ain't. Abandon that crap. Large. Yes. So now, now we can start making some differences. Let's get three generators on this bad boy. Let's get a couple of engines. Let's make this thing fast. We can stick the red star lane drives over here. So these work the same as normal star lane drives, but they also work in reds, I believe. More powerful version. Um, although regular star lane drives um, allow slow travel through the red links, the hyper lane hyper drive makes the use of red links practical. Uh, are much more costly to produce. So yeah, it's just a better version. So we'll have two of them. Why not? Um, guns, guns, guns. We'll get some missiles because they do a lot of damage in a single hit. We'll get a couple of pulses. Actually, I don't like the, the configuration of that. We'll get a replenisher. So we can hit things multiple times. And then let's get some stuff that allows us to look inside the ships. Why not? The X-ray mega glasses means if you've got a ship within range that um, you can that you've got um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for radar coverage of. So they're close enough to you that you've got radar coverage of them. Normally, all you can see is the stats up in the top left, how much energy they've got left, what their radar capabilities are, the movement, yada yada yada. With the X-ray mega glasses, if you have that information, you can also look at each individual module in the ship, so you can see what they're built of. Um, ah, oh, I suppose a shield. We get the concussion shield on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 5050, beg your pardon. Yes, the 5050. Yes, I know that one. Um, this one can be celery stick. 50. There we go. <clears throat> Get your own back! Let's just dump people in slime. Oh, I forgot about the ships in Yorbins. Fuck, we died. Oh, we lost somebody. Because <laughs> they... No way! They've got long-range orbital whoppers! That's the better version of the missile bases. Fuck, they must have got some sick technology from, from where they were checking out. Ah, uh, abandoned ship. We are... <laughs> we are leaving! <laughs> now, we're going to go to Feculum. Pole's done. Oh! Ow! 
there's a bit of damage. Oh, that was a lot of damage. Okay, we managed to get through the rest of it unscathed. Well, it is half two. So I'm going to call it there for this game. But that is Ascendancy, which is my second favourite game of all time. I love the music. I love the ship building in it. I love the visual design and how you can see into all the star systems. I just think this was a great game. And I would love it if there'd been a multiplayer version. And I do want to make a sort of a spiritual successor to this game. Improving all the things that I think were flawed with it. Yeah, I love this game. A, a lot. A very dear game to my heart. They made this, a remake of this, on the uh, on the iPod. It was on the Apple Store. But it's no longer there because the company doesn't exist. So my iPod that I have, my iPod Touch, uh, from way back when, still has the app installed on it. And so that's what makes it valuable to me. I don't get rid of it because if I ever do want to play this game out and about, I would need to load it up on my iPod Touch. And it's it's a clean version of this. Like all the the graphics on it are very crisp, a lot cleaner. It's you know it's something that was made in ooh when was it made actually? 2003, 2007, 2005. I don't know somewhere. Where... iPod had games. Yeah, had a had the App Store. Had the App Store because the iPod Touch wasn't a phone. It was just a it really was just a small computer. It was just a gadget. Listen to music on it. Play some little games on it. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, we're going to save that. And we're going to exit. Yeah, iPod touched the precursor to the phone. So before they chucked phone capabilities in it, the iPod was just a small computer. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Since you guys couldn't decide on jack squat, I will make the decision. Um... I'm going to go with Stronghold Crusader. Because I do think playing another space game would um, drive the points home a little bit too much. I had the iPod before Wi-Fi was a thing. Wow. Oh, yeah, my mum's got some of them. I've got some of them sat on the floor next to me because I've been messing about with mum's iPod as well. <clears throat> um, I'm going to do Stronghold Crusader then, as opposed to normal Stronghold. Because you didn't vote for it, so you don't get it. Because that's how democracy works. Uh, and I think if I play another space game, it will drive the point home a little bit too hard that I played a lot of space games, even though I did. Oh yeah, Stanji, uh, PK wants to play Open TTD with us. Play! Um, I need to move things around because things are not working. Remove that window. There we go. I know what I'm doing. Another game with beautiful music. Very atmospheric. Yes, the new Stronghold Definitive Edition is out because we saw Age of Empires did that and we want to try some. <laughs> Always amuses me that it does that when you type in your name. Greetings, Lord Andrew. Hello there. Uh, da, 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 da. I definitely need to turn down some options in here. What the fuck is going on? There we go. I've had to turn it down to 1%. We can't see the game. Why can you not see the game? I thought it had my display capture. Ugh, what the fuck? Uh, da, 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 da. I need to add it as a source, apparently. All right. Window capture. Add source. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I am not seeing it in my list of things that I can click on. Okay. Can I add the source as just the screen? Add the display. There we go. Oh, you're going to be one of them. If I minimize the game, it uh, doesn't let me mess about with the stuff. <laughs> Shit. Can I take this out of... Full screen mode? Video? 
Oh, that's not good now, is it? That's horrendous. Is it because the resolution is low? Oh, shit. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that looks weird. That looks weird with this enormous border. Alright, well, whatever. There you go, set up identity, so you can choose to be a crusader, or one of the Arabs. And you can also choose your portrait in this game. Lord Andrew! There we go. Yes, that is I. Crusader! Let us just go for a custom game. I always used to love playing custom games. And the map that I always used to like going for was the river. Very tiny, can't see it much at the moment because all the menus are based around a really old screen. I'm pretty sure it does open up to the full size. Wait, what? You can still see the game's options menu? What? Does this game not update visually? doesn't update. Wow, that's weird. I don't understand that. Okay, might not be able to play this game then. Clearly that game needs some extra work. Whatever frame it loads up when I click back into it, that's the frame you get and nothing else. <laughs> it doesn't refresh. Can you put it in windowed? No, I don't think I can. I mean, I'd probably have to do like something here in the properties to be like, you know, upon launch, do a thing, launch options. I'd have to do something advanced. I'm not going to mess about with that. We're not here for that. That's that's dumb. But that's very funny. Um, what to do then? What to do? What to do? Hmm, I'm genuinely torn now. What to play? Do I go with Open TTD? Because it's been a long time since people have seen it. Wow. Open TTD first released March 2004. Shall I come have a look? I don't think it would help, Blue. It's just one of them. It's just a technical issue. Remember how we had a lot with Max Payne? Where it was just like... It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Fuck you. It's not going to work. It's just one of them. So... Yeah, go on. We'll go with Open TTD. Let's start up a little Open D TTD company. Why not? Bit of nostalgia for people. Participate in automated study. What? No, go away. Anyone else remember this music? Um, should we do a <laughs> a build up to Christmas, or should we do something a little bit more old school? I always liked going in the desert because I liked the city builder element, but then there was always something fun about playing in the Arctic. With all the difficulty and terrain. What do we do? What do we think? What do we want? Someone throw something out there. We've got um, temperate, subarctic, subtropical, or toyland. Doesn't need to be a poll. I'll just answer to whatever the first one is. Also, I love how in this Ask Me Anything stream I've had very few questions. Winter! We go in fucking winter! Go hard or go home. Amen. New game. That'll do. Yeah, we'll just go with basic settings. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got the town names as Black Country. This was AMA. I can't read. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how much more obvious I could have made that for you, Stanji. Some would say it's quite obnoxious what I've done. But it has been there since the anything. <laughs> since the start. Fuck, I can't read chat and talk at the same time. Given that God is infinite. And that the universe is also infinite. I didn't realise that you watch Red Dwarf K. What the hell? This, the industry set defined in the GS setting doesn't match with the game's initial cargo list. Sucks to be it then, doesn't it? 
So, do, oh, can't keep that on screen. Good lord, that's way too, way too pale and white. Right, let's have a look at the town, town directory. We've got Aldridge at the top. Look at it. There it is. Put it in the centre of the screen. These are all the black country names. Love Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf's so good. Block switch. Yeah, it's a tiny little shit hole. There it is. Hey yo, look at this! We're here. Genuine question: favorite Red Dwarf episode? Ooh, I I don't know why because it doesn't have all of the cast in it, but I really liked the marooned one. I don't know why that one in particular. I just there was something about that one that usually makes me go back to watch that one. This game, no, the, I, I downloaded a mod pack blue. There's a thing, you, a plugin you can put in where you get all of the Black Country places names. <laughs> so we've got Pelso. <laughs> What's our goal then? I mean, the first goal is to turn this fucking music down a bit. I like the music in this game, but holy shit. There we go. Um. Oh yeah, we can change the set. We're keeping the fucking Doom playlist on because nothing else makes any goddamn sense in this. Right, what's the plan? I suppose we live in Blockswitch and my parents live in Brown Hills, so maybe we should make that a thing. We're doing it. Right, town directory. Let's build our initial plan. Oh, that's that's me. That's quite the handsome gentleman, Mr. E. M. Parker. No, that's not what I look like. What do I look like? What will I look like when I'm 50? Oh, that was it then. Can I? Can I? Oh, advanced. Yeah. No mustache. I look crap with a mustache. Where's my hair? Let's put this into the centre. We're building me, everybody. Got any blondes in here? Okay, apparently we haven't got any blondes, so we'll go with seven, I guess. Eye colour, piercing blue. Yeah, that'll do. Prefer white shirts, just a personal preference. Oh, the Giga Chad chin, hell yeah! That's me, that's, that's me. That's what we're going with, we're going with that. Colour scheme, it's got to be a dark blue. Yeah, there we go. Look at that sexy beast. You don't live in block switch, I think. Never mind. No, we don't live in block switch. I'm just saying I'd noticed it because I was like... Been... Oh, doom music. Uh, where is Brown Hills? Is there a Brown Hills? Yeah, there is. Right, so we're going to build ourselves here because we live in Pelsall. Well, we live near Pelsall, I suppose. We'll be over here, across the river. We kind of see. There is a. There should be a Warsaw. Surely there's a Warsaw. Is it a big city? Yeah, Warsaw City. Building to Warsaw. That's it. We've got to build to Warsaw. So where's Warsaw? On this map. Is it far or is it? Where are we? Where the hell was Pelsall then? Uh, Pelsall's there. And Warsaw was somewhere up here, wasn't it? Dudley! Oh, look at Dudley all on its own up there! It's proper good in it, huh? Where the hell's Warsaw gone? I saw it a second ago! Wolverhampton? Mm, avoid that. Oh yeah, there it is by the coast. So we've got got a bit of a journey. We've got to go round Quarry Bank, past Streetly, Highlands and Sandwell, past New Cross and Smethwick. It's a Warsaw. City of Warsaw. Got a few mountains to go through. What the f What the hell is this? <laughs> what travesty is this? 
where the hell did the map generation come with that? Whatever. Alright, we got to start doing some stuff. Where's Pulsal then? Pulsal was over here, wasn't it? Oh god, I hate this. The camera movements on this is fucked. Pulsal, there we go. Uh, I am going to change the music back. This is a little bit too depressing. Almost. Change set. There we go. Just some some happier music. New Cross is trying a new direction here. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything based on what I just said. We're just going to move on from that one. Because this is Blue Stream. So we're going to close that down. So we're going to head to Warsaw. We're going to build a route to Warsaw. So I suppose a train is the most logical one. Everyone loves the trains in this game. The trains are more fun. Why would you not want to train? We can have this train station accept food. That's good. Gives us a bit of uh, down the line stuff. We're not going to cheat and just have the trains turn around. Because I always hated that. Right. Uh, we'll leave some room for expansion. Oops. There we go. So we've got some ins and outs. Always best to do a one-way system, as we found. While it's very clever, when you get a multi-system going, and you're like, oh, look at me, look at look at how great I am, and I've managed to make everything run on the tracks and stuff, it just requires so much more effort. It's like, who cares? Man, we've got a long way to go. Who knew Warsaw was so far away? Let's build the receiving one. I'm probably going to need another loan, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Let's fuck them. This is where people can watch <clears throat> and uh, judge me on how I set up my trains. And by people, I mean Stanji, because they'll be like, Oh, why are you doing everything the way that you're doing it? And uh, it's because I can. It's basically, it's because I can. So we'll set that up like that, and then we can put in some little block signals, because I only use block signals, because um, I don't care enough to not. We'll put little start, little bits that where people can wait in. And then when that's all clear, you can come back this way. Doing a train in Factoria right now, yeah. Sounds about right. Alright, let's head up the hill. And let's see if we can just about skirt past this little mountain here, because that'll save us a bit of money. And then we'll come down the other side, and we're probably going to need to make some bridges. Yeah, we'll go past Smedic. Which is a sentence most people don't normally want to say, but we're going to go past Smedic. Going to need a few little bridges. We're going to need one there. And we're going to need one there, because I like two bridges. I do much prefer one my systems. They just, they just save you on a headache. Oh, can only just about skirt past. Look at that. Look at the number of pixels in between that. Uh, it's, it's so weird when you right click and drag because you naturally think of it as like your hand grabbing the board. So you were like, I want to go, I want the, the screen to go up. So you pull down thinking you can do it and it just moves in the same direction as the mouse. And that, that bothers me. Can't be asked to go and change it at the moment, but it's just really weird. Head down here. Have a look around the coast. Uh, I'm going to build over this river, even though I just talked about saving money because... Because. Thank you for coming for my TED talk. Oops, didn't mean to build it like that, but whatever. <clears throat> Stop! You fucking. I don't like to have to do it like this because it feels so much slower. It's nice to have the multi directional one. Right, go near Smethic. I mean, I suppose we go around the mountain would be the logical thing. Where the hell am I even going to? Why did I start with this project? This was so dumb. Where's Pelsal gone? Am I blind? Help? Help me? There it is. I guess we can go past Streetly and Friar Park, I guess. I 
think we need to kill the large worm already. It's holding your genius back. It's not a difficult task, holding your genius back. Maybe Blue should do a Christmas open TTD um, stream. We can pretend that we're the Yogs cast or something weird. Why not? No, we won't do that. Um, oh, actually, there's a perfect little little gap here. We're going to go there. We're going to go right past New Cross. I don't know what we're transporting, by the way. I'm assuming people. There we go. I think you'll run out of money first. Almost certainly. Almost certainly. At the very least from... Uh, I won't have enough to build a train. But we'll burn that bridge when we cross it. So I need to go past this friggin' lake. Pfft. How much money can I take out? Bank? To take it all. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Just close the wrong thing. Fuck it. Oh my god, I could build a bridge across these two peaks. Are you kidding me? That sounds awesome. That really does sound awesome. I kind of want to do that now. Just for the, just for the shits and giggles of it. Like, who, who cares? 42,000 pounds! Yes! Then we're going to mess with the terrain, because I can. Can I build a straight line across this? There we go. That was dumb. But I don't care. I did it. And then let's just build a straight line. Boom. We'll build the second straight line. That one I probably won't build a double bridge on because that would be dumb. That would completely cripple me financially. Did I build the wrong fucking bridge? I did. God damn it. Oh, have I got to blow that up, really? Whatever. Fuck the place of Bradley, no one cares that we're building a train right next to your house, you shouldn't have lived there. Line that up perfectly then. The people who enjoyed playing Open TTD way back in the day are the current people <clears throat> who play um, Warhammer 40k. That is how that naturally progressed. Uh, da, da, da. So let's just build some of them along there like that. This is just how I build my trains. Or oh, my train tracks. Shut up, there is a railway there. So I didn't specifically click on it. So pedantic. Don't need that one. It's a bit too much. There we go. Alright, we got the start of a railway going. Over a second bridge. How many bridges am I going to fit into this one? This this would be an awful way to play the game if you're on multiplayer or something. Really, really dumb. Like, not slightly dumb. Really dumb. Do we go past Quarry Park? Probably. Is this going to reach the river? It fucking is. Alright, we'll have to turn off then. This is going to need to bifurcate. 
suppose this would be the challenge of this map, though, is, you know, how can you do when you're deliberately at a disadvantage? You've got to work your way around all this crappy terrain. Fuck that bit. Oh, I placed something over here and I didn't mean to. No. Go away. We're going past Quarry Bank. In fact, we're going to go so far past it, we're going to go over the friggin' hill and we're going to come back on ourselves like a swan neck. Alright. Up there. And up there. Ah, camera. Uh, flip it over here. Uh, we don't need it to be quite that sharp a turn. That's a bit ridiculous. There we go. Uh, da 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 da. Let's build a second line. I know what I'm doing ultimately. I know it looks a friggin' mess at the moment, but it'll be fine. It'll work its way out. Like that. So here is where we want to do that. We don't want to cross over point there, that's not needed. So then you work your way up to the big bridge. We are going to need a second line a little bit earlier than I thought though. Yeah, like that. That's better. Where are we joining up to? Where is the other side of the track? It's over there. Again, it's probably easier to just come straight down the mountain and then deal with the problems afterwards. Like that. No, like that. Anybody else in the chat play Open T today or Transport Tycoon? Was it just me and Stanji? Are we the only weird people that got a kick out of this? Surely not. Surely there's other people that were like, ooh, it's like a model. What a train set. That's cool. I can build transport lines of whatever I want, like iron and stuff. Did you play like the old classic Transport Tycoon? Okay. Or is it just Open TTD that you played? I'm going to be obnoxious and British on this. And do that. Who's going to stop me? Who's going to stop me? Do what I want. Build bridges where I want. Don't have to go around the water. The water has to go around me. The most expensive project since HS2. There we go. Holy shit, that took a lot of money. Of the 500,000 that I started with, I have just over 100,000. What a project. And technically, it's not even finished because I got to put all the uh, all the stop signs and stuff on. That means we've got to follow this track all the way along and correct any mistakes. Don't worry, guys. We'll get to the gameplay soon. And when we get there, oh, is it riveting? You get to watch a train turn up at a station, and then it just goes woo, and then fucks off. It's, it's unbelievable. You won't be able to contain yourself. I know I couldn't. That last bit wasn't a joke. I don't know, HS2 is still not done. Yeah, I know, tell me about it. Will it ever be done? Maybe our children will see HS2 finished. Maybe. Uh, think you need a disc to play Open TCD or something like that. Um, No. 
I remember having uh, having to buy a disc of it, then getting something to make it playable. Oh yeah, so that wasn't Open TT, did that was just Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Again, another one that I have and that didn't work. And that's when I started looking around online of like, how the fuck do I get TTD to work on a modern computer? And they were like, oh, did you know? Did you know? And that's when I uh, discovered Open TTD. And I think Stanji already knew about it. He just didn't know that I'd played. And he was like, oh yeah, sweet, we'll, we'll play together. And we don't have to install Hamachi. No matter how many times I've installed Hamachi on any computer, it's never worked. It's really a case of, do you understand port forwarding, or are you going to go and fuck yourself? And that's it. There's your choices. I'm actually God. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I remember how much... Me and Stanji have very non-fond memories of Hamachi. Spending hours, hours, trying to get it to work, and it still doesn't. And you just want to care. You just, you just, you just want to not be here anymore. It's like I just want to play a game from, you know, 15 years ago. Leave me alone. This was the kind of strat that Stanji always beat me with Open TTD with at the start. It's like he'd build one railway line that connected the two corners of the earth. Like the river fucking sticks. And it carried so many goddamn passengers on it that it was like, it's going to make a profit. You'll make like 90k off this in one go. And then he'd just buy another train and just have it go in the counterclock, you know, like skipping every other stop. And that's how he'd win. And then the game would progress far enough, and I would buy exclusive um, exclusive rights to that particular town. So Stanji couldn't do that anymore, and then he'd rage, and then he'd fly planes into me like it was a particular day of a particular month to a particular kind of people. And then we stopped playing, and that was, uh, that was kind of just how we rolled. Good old open TTD dames. Should build another railway to Tipton. Sounds like a song that does. Like an oldie song. Uh, too many clicks. And not enough dicks. Seriously, the train that I put on this is going to be um, alone. It's probably the best description for it. He's going to be alone. <laughs> you better make us some fucking money, mate. We are literally relying on you. Don't tell the person who applies for this job how much he's got us by the balls. Last thing we need is another rail strike. Did you tell him he's like one of a committee, but they're just, you know, they, they, they haven't yet started. They'll be here, though, soon. Don't think about it. Don't ask too many questions. Just get in the train, make me some fucking money. Might want to say it's a load full cargo, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just take one, dude. Where you going, mate? Warsaw. Man. <laughs> Life's rough, isn't it? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why, are they Why are you going there? Do you have to change at the at Warsaw Station? Tell me you have to change at Warsaw Station and you're not just like going there to go there. Right? Nearly there guys! How long have I been playing this game now? Twenty minutes? 
But this was fun back in the day. You lived for this because you were like, as soon as I hit go, magic is going to happen. Right. Railway line is done. Oh, so, now that I've just rearranged all of my limbs. Let's do the time walk again. New vehicular device. What? There was never a search bar before. <gasps> Stand you, it's a whole new game. They've actually added in a search bar. You can search through all of the stuff. Without just having to like go up here and be like, oh, what engine size or what kind of cargo? They've got pictures! They've put pictures in! You can see! It's not just passengers, it's squiggly diddly passengers! Damn. Fucking armor. It's game. Right. You are going to go somewhere. You're going to go there. And then you're going to come back. And then you're going to service. Wait, what? This. This wasn't a thing. Always go. Service if needed. Stop. Unbunch. What the fuck does unbunch mean? I don't know what unbunch means. We're going to go service if needed. Weird. Fully load all cargo and unload all and... Fully load all cargo and unload all. You can pick up passengers. Let's go with five passengers and a mail van. Just to start us off. Just to get us started. Off you pop, son! Assume it separates train and wagons. Oh, maybe. This feature adds a new type of depot order, marking that depot... Marking that depot as the unbunching point for a group of vehicles which share orders. Mm. There he goes! Look at him! I can pin this. You can't zoom in on it, though. That's fine. And, uh... That's the game, guys. That's the game, because now we just play the waiting game of... You know, waiting until I've got some more money to fucking play with. There's a game that is similar to this in, mo in a more modern sense called um, Rise of Industry, which I did have fun with, but it does take a long time to make money. Like this, this I know this is taking a long time, but this is because I've deliberately done something stupid. If I'd done a closer railway system or some sort of local thing where it's like you just take it from, you know, like just off like there to there, that's fine. You make money in very short amount of time. In Rise of Industry, even a short distance like that, you make a profit, but it's so small, it just takes ages. Like a, like a painfully long amount of time. Once you get going and you've got about three or four businesses, money comes in at a decent rate that you can build a new thing every sort of ten minutes or so, or, you know, slightly, maybe quicker than that. But to start with, you're like an hour waiting, watching a fucking train go back and forth. It's painful. Go on. <laughs> Can I clone you yet? No, I need 41,000. I'm just eating a biscuit now. How have you guys found the train? Where do you download your mods for TTD? Um, it's in the actual game itself. It's a very well made... Oh my god, that's taking ages. It's a very well made game that they've done. So there's a particular option. I'll have a look in a sec. It'll be like, um... New... GMR or something, or... I don't know. Stand you probably tell you. Stand you now. How much money is this going to make me? Oh my god, how many times are you going to crash on the way? Jesus. I think it's crashed a dozen times so far. I didn't think it would crash that much. Like, once or twice, sure, but... Only five grand. <laughs> I have made HS2. <laughs> oh my god. 
That's fucking funny. How not to play Transport Tycoon. I could have sworn you used to make ones like this and it would do shit to the money. Maybe I just needed more carriages on it or something. I don't know, but that's funny. And then it made 11 grand. So yeah, we're going to go down under. So this save is basically fucked. <laughs> Let's head back to the... Um... Oh, they've made transparency options like quicker to access now. Game options. There we go. Abandoned game. That was a fucking dumpster fire. Um... New GRF settings, there you go. Oh no, that's how you activate them, sorry. It's um, check online content. There you go. And you tick whichever things you want. Hello, Cor. Alright. We'll call that one there, because that was a disaster. Um... Ah, fuck it. Let me show you Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Why not? I'll just do the Steam one, because the graphics at least look decent. Mechanic-wise, this is the probably the worst version of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. They didn't do it good justice in this HD edition. It looks... Beautiful. Truly spectacular. But they didn't include a lot of the stuff that they really should have done. So. There we go. Just K reminding me that i got to mute every fucking thing. Himmel. Dot emu is almost what um, Australia had to adopt as its internet thing if it had lost the wars with the emus. Seven weeks have passed since we set sail for Menroth. Yeah, no one cares. Why is it so fucking loud? Let's drop that down a bit. That's better. That's a more acceptable volume. What a tune though, I know. Tell me about We put this on loop when we play the board game. Yeah, Krauser is a fucking troll. Right, I'm just going to do a quick one. Just a, a little scenario. I'm not going to do... Actually, no, that was the thing. That's why this version is the worst one. It doesn't have random map generation. Because that came in one of the expansions and they did not include it in this. Which is a travesty. Because me and Stanji were playing the HD remake for so long. And we, sw we were going insane. Because we were like, we could have sworn there was a random map. And it's like, well, it's not here, dude. They've remade the game and it's not there. And we were driving ourselves crazy. And then we downloaded the one from GOG. And we were like, there it is! It does exist, you lying bastards! So, right. I always like to go for... I think it was Crimson Clover. I think it was this one that I played. The one that I really liked the most. Uh, I'm going to be the blue player. Because obviously. What race am I playing? Alright, everyone pick a number between 1 and 8. And then I will pick a number from your numbers. There you go. I ain't got time to do a poll. Nobody got time for that shit. Meet him last of my biscuits. Blue said 6. We're going with 6 first. She said it first. It's her stream. What do we do an average? Ooh, we could do mathematics on this. We could do an average. 6 and 2 is 8. Plus 5 is 13. Plus 7. Mmm. Chocolate biscuit. It's 20 and then 26 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 26 over 5. That doesn't work, does it? It's 5 and a bit, so it's still 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The Dungeon! It's five. Alright. It's five. I get to play as the Necropolis. <laughs> Do you want me to play as five?
You know what? You're all just so bloody annoying. Set to random. I'm starting with an artifact. That is the, the one thing that I will start with. I want an artifact. And we're gonna go. Who am I? Oh, I'm Stanji's favourite! He loves the fortress! <laughs> Stanji hates the fortress. Which is weird, because they have some of the most defensive units. Look at all these numbers and skills and stuff. If you've never played this game before, you won't understand. And it's so late into the stream. I'm not going to bother explaining. I explain very little. This is my dude. This is Voy. He's like Vaz, but, you know, came a bit sooner, alphabetically. He's got wisdom, which is good, and he specialises in the sea. There's not a lot of sea here. And the artifact I got is the Still Eye of the Dragon. Bear with me in a minute. The uh, orchestra's kicked up. I get more luck and morale. Look at that. Because of the ring I've got. Must be like a ring of divorce or something. Let's get some more archers because archers are the best thing in this game. Thank you, Cor. That's the first thing that anyone's donated to me this stream. Streamer life is hard. I say that, I'm eating chocolate biscuits and I'm at home sat in my pants. Not that hard. What do we go for first? I'm going to play this completely unconventionally, just so I can upset Stanja. Because that, that's how I get my kicks nowadays, basically. It's just how can I upset Stanja. I'm going to upgrade the Lizard Den first. Mm. Now we've got Lizard Warriors. Ooh. Now we need some more Nulls. Um, I feel like you're a better dude. This dude's a better dude. Dracom. We're going to hire him. I can't... Mm, i got to go outside the city to move this stuff. Alright, give us all that shit. And split that off. Like that. Right. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the world. If you stick to roads, you get to move further. And your movement is this teeny tiny little very important green bar over here on the right hand side next to your hero's face. They made it small, so that it's worth more when you see it. Let's kind of wander around. Let's get some ore. Get a daily tick of two ore per day. That's nice. What the fuck is that? I have never seen that before. Does Blue know about that? On screen Murlocs? Alright, I'm also going to send Vaz out. This is Vaz now. It's just easier. Vaz, give him. We're not going to finish that sentence, but we, we want that. Can we. Oh, you can't trade spell books. What spells do we even have? Combat spells. We have slow. That's a very useful spell. And that's it. Wicked. Alright, go back in there. Actually, go and get us some wood. Yeah. Beautiful sunrise over the sea. I never understood how it's always a sunrise over the sea, even if you're on a landlocked map. How can you see it? I'm going to pick that up. And we're going to go to the swamp pond for more. You're going to stick some fucking air elementals right off the bat. How cruel are you? Do you have no mercy? Bit of wood. I think that's the thing I liked about this map, is that it just gives you the starting stuff. It's like, everyone gets the same starting shit. Let's see who's the best. Which is nice. We are not going to go and fight that. We're going to go and have an explore. What do we build next? What do I want next? What do I want next? Let's get the wyvern nest. I never imagined wyverns or wyverns living in like a bush in a tree. But I guess they do. 
There they are. Split them in two. There you go. There's Biggs and there's Wedge, and I'll just put them together again. What is this artifact? A brief roadside encounter with a small caravan and a game of knuckle bones wins a magic pendant. Its former owner says that it protects against hypnosis. Stop making me want to play the games. Mate, I play good games. What can I tell you? Go back to your Factorio, you fucking nerd. You better not be getting too far without me. Because I can't play at the moment. I have a lot to do. I have to care for a lot of people. Oops, I didn't even see that there was ore there. It blended in with the map, but I just found some ore. I found rocks! You're making shit work. I mean, all of your work is shit work, so... You didn't have to say the same thing twice. Let's get a town hall for more money income. Oh, this is Mudshire. Welcome to Mudshire. I could probably kill some of these, like, troglodyte things. I don't. Oh, I didn't need more luck. Well, whatever. Campfire! Warm your creature by the fire. You might improve its power. Let's go back to town. This can be my runner. This lizardy dude is my runner. Let's get a mage guild. I want some spells. Uh, specifically optimizing the old base and staying the hell away from Vulcans. It's driving me a little bit mad. Yep. Well, remember blueprints are your friends and so are robots. What is out here in the world? Ladybird of luck. Thanks. I have... Stupidly good luck. Holy shit. Right, get back in there. And we're going to go for... Serpent Fly Hive. These are really good units, the Serpent Flies, because they're fast. Fast and they have good initiative. Buy them. In fact, we've got two Wyverns. What are Wyverns damage? 14 to 18, and base creatures have a health of 6. So each one of these can probably kill... Of a not of a different enemy, because they won't all have the same health. But I'm sure most enemies have of the first they have between like four and six health. So you know, sort of three to five units that it can kill. And it's got seventy health. Pfft, yeah, Wyverns Wyverns can deal a bit of damage, you know. They're they're not bad. Let's um Let's go and meet up with uh, my main dude. Who's my main dude? And then Dracon. Let's go meet up with Dracon, let's give him these units. For 2,000 gold, you'll give me a level up. Seems reasonable. Basic Scholar allows heroes to teach others first and second level spells. Nah. Advanced Leadership. Money! I need the monies. I need the monies. The money's so bad. Please give me the monies. This game doesn't lock the mouse cursor in. Uh, so I keep I keep doing that and disappearing out. I don't know if that affects the audio. I think it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Time to make you think that there's something wrong with your headset. Glyphosphere. Don't need that yet because there's no one nearby. Um, we'll get the Citadel tomorrow. Right, Dracon. Go and give him the good units. Uh, let's put the archers in the center. Let's do it like that. And then you can head back to base to go and pick up the new recruits. Might as well split these up. It's a good tactic. Uh, no, we'll put you there and we'll put an odd one in the corner. There's a bit of bait. Sanjo always used to call that a cheese strap, but it's a strap. Get good. <clears throat> Lots of familiars. They begin to scatter. Yes, we will pursue them because I want the experience. And this is the battle screen, and this looks exactly the same on the tabletop version, but we've not tried that version yet. We've only done the base game version, which is all done through cards as opposed to models. Wait right, there a second, dudes. Let's let these guys get a little closer. Look at him go. <laughs> uh, let's go and protect. Ooh, good shot. Damn. 
Uh, we don't need the morale. Hello, 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 Des. Oh, and a bit of morale. How much damage did I do? 75 damage. Hell yeah, that's more than enough to kill them. Fuck, you know, get wrecked. Easy. This game, um, I suppose, is most similar to, like, Age of Wonders. <clears throat> Very similar type. Heroes was just such a ball again. He's played hours of this. This was another one of those games where you just build up your city so that it had literally everything and then you just death stack all of your units, just get shit tons of units to then go and fight the enemy in one big climactic hand slapping battle because, you know, it's just how the game works. Uh, I don't want to bastly put... Oh no, I want the Citadel because it's day 7. Every week you get more units and the Citadel improves how many units you get. So if you'd have been watching before and these numbers all just went up. It's the week of the eagle. All Americans become erect. Let's go to the obelisk and see where things are buried. They are buried above ground. You can tell that because there is water just up here. Just behind the ask me anything. Just behind the ask me anything. And then we're going to go home I think we're gonna head back home we're gonna start clearing out some of the base because there's a lot of goodies in our home base that we are not getting access to because they're all blocked off by randoms and we'll start getting the stuff so we can upgrade this the main hall because then we'll get 2,000 uh, gold a day as opposed to just the 1,000 money is king in this game we really need money let's go and fuck up some troglodytes Hell yeah. Resource silo for stone and wood. Basic, but necessary. We have no money. We are the skint. Do you want to fight? Are you dumb? Alright. I'll take you on. Let them drums go nuts. The enemy's a bit too far away, so we do suffer a range penalty. Don't need any of your lot to move. Let you wait, let you wait. Uh, you can walk down here and defend. You'll all die. Oh, and with luck. Get fucked. <laughs> luck again, man. <laughs> I've been out all day walking, so I'm knackered. Got a game tomorrow which will dictate whether or not my 40k team will be placing third in the tourney we've been playing for this year. Ooh. Increases your eagle eye skill. Oh. Yeah. Love that. And imps that also want to throw their life away. Why? Why? I beat the familiars which are the better version of imps. Right, wait there a sec. Shoot these guys. Kills them. How much damage do I do? Let's say 2, so 20. So I would take some damage from that, so I don't want to do that. You, however, will wreck face. You killed two of my nulls, you bastards! <clears throat> yeah, redeems don't work. <coughs> oh. Can't yeet the Arcanine at me. I am the one who Arcanines. Blacksmith! With parts! <coughs> Ooh, we see red. Red is out there. Who is red? Orcs. The orcs are out. Got some gems from a gem pond. And I'll take money, because I need money. <coughs> oh god, water's gone down the wrong hole. Yeah, blue's turned everything off because there's only so much that I can be trusted with. 
Right, let's buy some stuff. We actually want some lizards first and some wyverns because they're the best. Can't afford to upgrade the city, but this is just kind of what happens. Oh, and there's orange. Orange, one of us! <gasps> well, we know we're killing first. Getting another town that is the same race as you makes it so easy to just death stack stuff. It's brilliant. Otherwise, you have to have two armies. Wait and wait. Let the skellies come forward to their demise. Do a bit of damage. Only a bit. Uh, you can't do anything. Take out most of them. <clears throat> go and block that. And go and block that. Wow, you couldn't kill one null? he got one health left? What a beast. What a beast. He just took that to the face. And then you die. That one dude needs promotion to a null captain. Just straight up. You just got 3v1. They tried to, like, bum rush him. He's just like, nah. Nah, not happening. Another wyvern, please. Wyverns are sick. You better get the fuck out of my territory before I come and black your eyes, mate. To start the game. It's got there. Alright. Let us buy another wyvern. Because it's a new day. Um, can I get anything else? Yeah, we'll get some... Some nulls. Right, let's go and... Let's go and trade. Let's go and give them all the stuff. More wyverns. More bows. And then let's trade with that one. Hand it all over. Uh, I don't want to have that because it's shit. And being immune to the hypnotize spell is pretty good. If they've got it. Yeah, you fucking walk away. Kick the shit out of you. Head back to town. You're going to have a rest. Go have a sleep. Get your head down. Oh, shoo. Demon growth up by five. If there is an Inferno player in this game, I doubt they will have bought demons already. <clears throat> the battles will get more interesting than this as we are. It's just because at the moment we're just basically tidying up the neighbourhood. It's essentially what it is. Uh, don't want you to move, don't want you to move, don't want you to move, or you. Take them out. Ooh, nice. Bit of luck. Dunion rings. Crystals. Get some daily crystals. Uh, we could upgrade something, but I'm actually going to buy the basilisk then, just so we've at least got it ticking over in the background. The population grows there each week, and they do last. They don't, um, <clears throat> they don't refresh at the end of the week. They do stack. So the two normal strategies to go for is either you get your city hall up to a capital first, so you're making the most money you possibly could per turn, uh, or you unlock all of your denizens, your dwellings, so that you're gaining the most population that you can possibly have in the game. Those are the two normal ways of doing it. Luck is so good, I get multiple turns. Ah, oh, you could reach and you had to kill one of them, didn't you, you bastard? Fine. Club their heads in. I didn't think they'd be able to reach. I should have checked, but never mind. Basic sorcery. All spells do an additional 5% damage. Do I want you to be a sorcerer? I don't think I do. No, I don't think I do. <clears throat> yes, I will pursue you because I want that experience. Experience makes me stronger.
Fucking hell, how far can you move? Speed of seven. The speed of a wyvern? Good in Himmel. Uh, five times fifteen is uh, da, 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 three hundred. No, seventy-five. Wrong way. <laughs> Math, the wrong way. Seventy-five health. Uh, I don't think I can do that much damage with these small weights. No, wait. Uh, oh, very nice. Move these guys up. Defend. Move these guys up. No. Whatever. Whatevs. Alchemy. I can't reach that guy. Uh, da, 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 da. I suppose let's get some better spells. Oh, I didn't. Um, I need to come back and get a spell book. What spells have we got access to? Magic arrow, obviously. Stone skin increases the unit's defense. Reveals the location of all resources on the map. Which sounds overpowered, because it seems like worldwide. It's not that useful. Cure, remove negative effects. Slow, we already have. Weakness, reduce attack. L oh, increase luck. I don't actually need that, I have so much luck. Increases ranged attack damage. And damage. Okay. I can't afford jack shit, I've only got 40 gold. Seriously need some money income. Really badly. I suppose let's go and get some gold income then, because we do need it. Yeah, I do want to save up to get the city hall because it makes a huge difference the amount of income you've got. So we're gonna we're gonna wait out a few turns. Hmm. You're actually kind of dangerous, I think. I don't want to fight you, because I don't have a spell book either. So that wouldn't be wise. Oop. Boom. Now instead of a grand a turn, we're making two grand a turn. Very nice. Found a chest bod. Prove the power of water spells. I don't think we actually have any decent water spells. I don't know if that's a good one to go for. We'll go with Advanced Armour for now. Uh, when equipped by a hero that's in a town, increases the growth of your fourth level units in that town by three per week. What are my fourth level units? Basilisks. Okay. Go and hand that in. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Do kind of want to save up for some stuff, so I'm not going to buy anything just yet. Let tick over. Question: Normal or chocolate digestive biscuits? They were chocolate. Normal ones are fine for like the first two, and then after that, you just think, "Man, I really wish these had some chocolate on them." A hundred and forty trogidites! God damn! This could end badly. I'm gonna have to do some serious kiting here. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> that archer is was. Did you have to brew... Did you have a brew to dip the bickies in? Oh, I did. I did have a brew. I don't normally dip as much, though, because I tend to find that a lot of chocolate, uh, a lot of uh, biscuits nowadays do tend to be get very crummy as soon as they touch any liquid. And so you end up having, like, a cup of soup with biscuit crumbs in. Oh, and another turn. It's weak in that horde. Back it up, back it in. Let me begin. 
Uh, disappear down here. Ah, he's getting very close! Uh, I would be able to do 120 damage minimum. Hmm. Wait for now. Go and do some damage. Got to engage him at some point. We lost four nulls. It's not great. Oh, and we lost a dragonfly. Okay. All things considered, with how many they had, I'll take that. Because... Oh, it's an orpit? I thought it was always gold. You... Bastard! Alright, well... Oops. Can't use WASD to move around the map. Alright! Are you... You have chosen death. Yeah, it's random, evidently. I always thought it was gold. Uh, let's get some Gorgonis. If you think I'm just going to bend over backwards and let you come in and take my shit, you've got another thing coming. Lots of archers. We will defend this castle with our lives. Um, it's just that the lives we have chosen to defend them with are yours. Yep, you turned around immediately like, nah, I ain't doing that. What have you got? Are you dangerous? You are potentially dangerous. If you're going to try and box yourself in like a knob, I will let you box yourself in. I do need more units at the moment. Let's get some cannon fodder, and then let's get some big guns. I need to build up a good army for my dudes. Yeah, you j Oh, you've gone underground. Alright. Yeah, this guy just needs to die. He's just in my territory. He's, you've dug too deep. You've made an error. You have fuked up, as they would say. So, let's go and teach you why you don't do that. You can scout around your own territory. That's fine. As soon as you start scouting around other people's with a scout, you, bad things are going to happen. Have a Wyvern. Have a Narcher. Have a one of them. Oh, you're not going to auto-split for me. There you go. Uh, and take that, and then go back to town and increase the growth per week. Please, thank you. <clears throat> you ain't going nowhere now, sunshine. Don't need to do any of the upgrading just yet. I will do the Glyphs of Fear, because it's only a grand. At least it means I've built something. More troops. Need the troops. Orange is now going to go and steal my shit. Here is a battle without a spellbook. We do not recommend that you do this. You're not ranged. You are the only ranged one. Alright. You killed five gnolls. Congrats. Was that worth it? don't know why you target the gnolls. Oh. oh. Pathetic mage noises. Get rid of you. Damage that I did is 14. So I deal at least 70 odd damage. So I'd kill two of them. It's all about removing things in initiative order. Stop trying to kill one of my wyverns. They're expensive, you prick. Thank you. I'll take that. Oh, logistics. I get to move around the map better. Yes, 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 yes. Why can't I go there? Are you kidding me? I'm stuck behind a pack of rocks. There's a clear gap. This is bullshit. Oh, my days. Oh, 
Oh, that's too many rocks. Oh, that is too many rocks. That's that's horseshit. Right, turtle mode. Look at how far they move. They're the equivalent of my wyverns, aren't they? Yeah, they have less health. And they do less damage. <sighs> Turtle in, boys. It's going to be a rough one. Take the bait. Wait, is Wyvern tier 4 or 5? Um, 5. No, 6. Rock, rocks and... Because what after Wyverns, it's Hydra. Hydra are the best unit. Wyverns are the one below. And it's the same for Rocks, isn't it? Because the top one is the Behemoth. And then the one below that is the Rock and the Thunderbird. So they're, they're on the same one. Take them out! I said take them out and you didn't take them out! Thank you. Wait. Uh! Oh yeah, attack the Nulls. I'd rather you attack the Nulls. I would much rather you attack the Nulls. They're the, they're expendable. That's what they're here for. Is it Cyclops? Uh, wait, I'm not that dumb. Defend, defend. Nah, you can hit them. Yeah, okay. That weren't too bad, all things considered. That was not too bad. Alright, now go and get that. Oh my god, they're right outside my gate! I cannot get the capital. Oh, I need the castle. I cannot get the castle. Cage of Warlords. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely need to return home with this dude. Oh my god, everyone's going underground. Should make a song about that. Right, head home. Need to head home. Uh, Blood Obelisk. We are building a <laughs> fortress. I need to head home because I need to get a spell book and also these benefits from the natural from the buildings. They just level you up. In fact, yeah, let's uh, let's get. I think that's our maximum level. Yeah, three out of a potential level five mage guild. We're not smart people. What spell did we get though? Force field, okay. Earthquake, very good. And landmines, good if you're good at baiting people. All right, take them. Increased defense skill, buy a book. Uh, put those in there. Swap those two over. Let's get some units then. More bows. Bows are always useful. Can we replenish our nulls by a few? Yeah, I'll get three more. The rest I'll get you to bring out to me. I don't really want to fight the rocks again just yet because there's no point. upgrade the place at the moment. I just want to get better stuff. And I feel like Wyverns are the way to go. Let's fight something a little bit nastier. Wow, they don't even they don't even want to fight me. No, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to get the experience. 21. I never noticed the fucking faces on these guys. Look at the, the beards they've got on them. I thought they were you know, like the completely shaved head sort of thing. You know, no hair, no beard, no moustache. They were just like like humanoid beings, you know, that sort of sci-fi-esque thing of like they are completely hairless because they have evolved beyond monkeys. But no, look at him, he's got massive flowing beard and big ears and he's even got a butt head! Look at his butt head! He's got a crease in his head! Like a butt! Uh, I don't know what tier you guys are but it's definitely lower than the wyvern so let's go and bite you. Defend. They've evolved beyond 
foliage follicles. We take the piss out of Stanger now because he says foliage. I shot the wind! Adds a new definition to blowing raspberries, that one. Uh, defend. Wait. Ooh. You can just wait, because I can probably shoot these guys now. Oh, one shot, one kill. What do I get for my troubles? Probably some crap. Basic wisdom, yes, because that allows you to you learn higher level spells. Ever smoking ring of sulfur. Nice. I'll get my other dude to carry that. Because he's a stay at home woman. Uh, and there you go. Goodbye. Plus two luck until next battle. There's so many frigging rocks in my territory. But I suppose they are kind of defending stuff as well. Because they're there. Unless they're not in the way of stuff, in which case, fuck them. Alright, let's get some more gnolls. I need some more cannon fodder. And let's actually buy some gorgons. I want to go and fuck somebody up. And look at that. Somebody fuck upable. I need to save up for a castle, don't I? Oh. Go inside the castle. Go inside the castle. There you go. Yeah, run away. Weak of the raven. That's so raven. What does the obelisk show us? Where is the treasure? You won't tell us. It's probably going to be behind this man. Well, based on this V, it's in the centre. So we know it's around here somewhere. Maybe we should just start digging. I guess it's here. I will find out tomorrow. Um, adventure options, dig. Nope, not there. Alright. Takes a whole day to dig up to see if the grail's there. Castle! That improves your defences when you defend against people uh, sieging your castle. And it also improves how many units you build. Uh, you produce per week, sorry. And yeah, no one's attacking me. They're all running around me because they know they will get fucked. Dig. Not that. Next. I will come and fuck you up. I will do this thing. These are some pretty formidable forces now. I am in the stage of fucking you up a lotty. Ah, uh, you just has to go and mess about in my area. <laughs> Third time's the charm, baby! I'm heading back and I'm rich! Oh, the game crashed! No! No! Oh, fuck it. Well, that's probably a good place to end anyway because it's four o'clock and I have to call it there. we got to go over to Blue's parents for dinner. Oh, well. Yeah, that's karma, that is. That's what happens when you just guess where the grail is and you just dig it up on your third time. They're like, fuck you, get out of here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed a little spook stream. It's been completely unconventional. It's been unscripted pretty much unplanned right from the start it's just me been talking shit and answering like two questions one of which was about biscuits and the other one who cares um maybe i'll do this again sometime because this, this has been fun it's been fun i've had a lot to do today so it's probably not been the best day to do it on i've i literally woke up around like nine o'clock and have not stopped doing stuff for somebody so i'm a little knackered but i'm probably going to go to uh blue's parents and i might have a drink play a few board games might be fun. But, uh, yeah, if you want to see this again, if you want a, another sort of strategy-focused one, either just me or me and a mate, because I know Stanji likes to play strategy games if he's ever around, or Narrowin or Das or something, we could, yeah, if somebody's around, they want to join me, we could do some strategy games. Strategy Saturday or something, or Strategy Sunday. I'll leave it up to you guys, see what you think, because I have a, a plethora of strategy games, as you can see from my nostalgia thing that I go through some of which are just single player but um, some of them are also multiplayer 
and our more fun multiplayer. And I will look at seeing if I can find some way of making Stronghold recordable. Because they're Stronghold Crusader especially with more people is very fun. Very fun. But anyway, that'll do for now. Uh, how the fuck do I... Oh, I know, hang on. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. you got to bear with me a sec. Uh, you just got to bear with me just a sec. i got to end this properly like the way that Blue ends it. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Yeah, what's your favourite part of the stream been there? Yeah, that's the one we'll go with. Um... Which one do I pick, though? Which is like a good one where it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll go with that one. Oh, let's go with a classic. Let's age some people. Let's make people feel really fucking old. See everybody. Hope you enjoy Blue Stream tomorrow. Um, I don't remember what her stream schedule is, and she's been doing it for a couple of years now. I always forget, but I know that tomorrow is Creature Sunday. So, see you later.